Hi, good evening and welcome to the Deerfield uh, Select Board Board of Health meeting on June 19th, 2019. We're opening the meeting at um, 5.45, a little behind schedule. Um, I'm calling the meeting to order. This meeting will be recorded. And um, let's see, we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all. So, um, I don't know if you had a chance to do the minutes or do you want to do that after? I think we're a little behind, so I was wondering, do you want to do that later? Yes. Okay. So um, we have a couple of scheduled appearances tonight. Um, the first is um, uh, we're talking about, tonight we're talking about a couple of debt exclusions that are coming up, um, ballot questions that will be on the ballot um, on June 24th, on Monday. Um, so we thought we'd just have a just slight discussion. We're not here to um, discuss pros and cons of, of those um, articles. That's up, up to the people, but we're here to answer questions. And we thought if, um, if Darius Modesto, our superintendent, was here to answer any questions or just give us an outline of what, what we would do if, if that was, um, if it passes, I think, um, and give an update on where the other towns are at. So would you like to come up, Darius? And sure. Sure. <clears throat> so yeah, come on up. Yeah, here. come on up. Yeah, and you get the mic there for people at home. All right. So mainly it was just to give an update on, on uh, if where, where I guess. things are at. Yeah, where things are so, at. Where we would um, you know, this spring we brought to all four town meetings a capital um, improvement plan um, and request to go and get a loan for funding of the plan for a 10 year, um, for over 10 years. Um, the overall cost of the project that we're looking at is uh, 1.8 million over 10 years. Mm -hmm. um, all four towns at town meetings had voted to allow us to get go into debt for those, for that uh, money. Okay. Um, the timeline of this is that by the time we get the, um, get all the paperwork in place and get projects in place. This is actually not gonna happen until the next, it won't happen until actually fiscal year 22, because we actually, the projects on this probably will not start until um, into July of next year. Okay. And then you have a full 12 months after that to um, to pay the bill. So, right. so it really, it, it carries on. So it's kind of a, um, when people are looking at the fiscal responsibility of each town, this is actually a, kind of a delayed start there. Yep. So all four towns have voted to move it forward. Um, okay. And I think as we know, Deerfield put a uh, uh, condition that it had to be for debt exclusion as part of that. So, the, right. you know, uh, basically my perspective, it's been approved by the town of Deerfield and it's just how you're going to fund it. But right. I understand that if it's a, if the vote is not in favor of the debt exclusion, it, 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 it shoots down the, 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 project. the project moving forward. Yep. Um, if that occurs, then we will be back next year to, you know, give it, give to it go it again at a different yep. kind of, and look at a different kind of way. Because obviously, I'm hearing from the towns, um, it was probably close to majority vote. I mean, not close to majority vote. It, um, almost unanimous. Almost unanimous in almost every town. Um, there was a few in yep. Deerfield that uh, voted against, but it was, you know, by far overwhelming right. support for this. So, yeah, I think there is. There for. Yep. So, um, and the, so uh, Projects includes, for those who haven't been uh, paying attention, we're not able yep. to be at town meeting. Um, we're looking at repairing the, the library structure, the ceiling, insulation, lighting. Um, we will be going for grants in green energy grants and that kind of thing to pay for along with it. Yep. Again, this is a projection out of costs. So it's hard to uh, nail down exact costs. So these are right. general costs um, that you know, we're gonna have to stay in the range of. Yep. Um, the, and I kind of want to digress, the, Capital Improvement Committee, which is made up of four Frontier Regional School Committee members and a select board member from each town, will be overseeing these projects over the 10 years so right. that we stay accountable to the towns. That's not just the money given to be spent on any which way. Right. It's going to follow the plan um, and have that type of oversight. So and that, I think, is key to, yeah. what, to what we're doing. And I think so. that's what we heard. It was about, you know, in the past, capital improvement projects came yearly. You know, we always talk, what can the towns afford? You know, right. what's on our list? 
and now we're really trying to be more transparent as a regional school. As it, the building's 20 years old. Yep. There's going to be some wear and tear that you know, we have to address. Uh, if we want the building to last 20 years, we've got to put a little money into it now. If we don't right. put money into it now, you know, the larger bill will come sooner, sooner I yep. think. Um, yep. So um, also included, um, we'll be pre replacing uh, many areas that have 21-year-old carpets um, yep. that teenagers were on, <laughs> um, just to get that visual. Yep. Um, there are parking lot structures. So if you drive through Frontier parking lot, the actual where um, uh, drainage goes out have sunken in because oh. the, the, the actual structures beneath the parking lot, besides it being a, a probably a scrape in paving, those things have to be done as well. That yeah. is included in there. Okay, good. Um, replacing the uh, rubber roof flats um, in the building. So those are at reaching yeah. at the end of their life's in, um, life as well. Um, upgrade and repair our HVAC system. It's probably terribly, not probably, it's terribly inefficient to where it was when it was installed. Um, and uh, we have been chipping away at it through the years. It was on a uh, air pressure system, moving over to electronic controls okay. so that you get better, uh, you know, uh, uh, efficiency. You know, better efficiency from sure. it. Um, but, you know, we have other units that they're Air conditioning units the size of cars that are yep. different kind of things that can be replaced by more efficient units. Again, these are all the things we're going to look at for, you know, energy grants and that kind of stuff. Anything yep. we can do to reduce the cost of these projects um, it will be done. And then the largest one, I think a lot of people have hung their hat on it, but it's uh, the last one on the list is the, the reconstruction of the, of the track. So mm -hmm. the athletic track um, was resurfaced over 10 years ago. But we brought a company out to resurface it again. You know, uh, the, the, the regional district had about, the school committee moved forward. It's just over $100,000 to redo the top of it. We brought a company out. They said that we wouldn't guarantee it over, over one, you know, we wouldn't guarantee the work of it because the, wow. the, the base of it is, is cracked. If you go out, you can see the asphalt where roots have come in over time. Um, they said the longevity of, you know, we, they thought the track held up well for what it did. Yeah. We brought out two companies where they both agreed that that's what had to be done. They weren't going to be able to just lay down a new Another top way, yeah. surface. So yeah. that's why it's a larger number. Um, the number that we're looking at is you know 600,000 there. So it is the, um, the largest number of that, that, right. that full project. So, yep. um, I think it's important to know that Deerfield, <clears throat> um, Deerfield's uh, portion of this is just about half. Um, yeah. I think the... Um, the estimated tax rate impact if debt excluded is 681,942. So, um, you know, so yep. when you're talking about it, it's not the 1.8 that you saw right. originally, it's really, it, it's, exactly. that, it's the Deerfield's percentage of that. Yep. So, and I think it's a, important that, they, that that committee, uh, Capital Improvement Planning Committee, continue to look at, you know, the timing of these projects, how they go, um, you know, decide what comes first, what comes next. Yep. Um, and then, um, and then to continue to look forward, what are those needs coming down the road? I'd love to see, and we've pulled out originally, was to start setting um, a little bit of money aside each year as a, as a stabilization fund. We mm -hmm. did not fund that through this amount, but um, I think I heard that loud and clear from people at town meeting. They said, look, you know, yes, you're doing this, but you know, where's your future plan? Where's the money set aside for right. that? And I know we're doing a lot out of E&D, yep. some other ways that we can pull money to do the general maintenance, but it'd be good to have so start again, planning that. We're not going out, we're going to be uh, taking loans through a series of, of notes. So we'll be, we'll, we will be borrowing the money when we need the money. So we're not gonna go out, and get the full, full amount, and then take several years to get through these projects. Correct. Um, the idea was look at all the major expenditures over the next 10 years. What we did is we took the highest ticket items and put into this capital plan. Yep. The idea is that we still have to, you know, pick away at the <laughs> other projects through, you know, Frontier has you know, E and D, which mm -hmm. is basically free cash is in a town. What we have for right. leftover, um, you know, up to up to five percent. Frontier is allowed to do so. Yeah. You know, we will will be using that, that money. Um, a proportion of that money will still be using a portion of that money to offset the assessment whenever course, we can, yep. and then obviously some portion of that for emergencies. Um, the other thing is through regular budgeting. Yep. as well so yep. i mean those are we're gonna have to you know we have smaller you know fifteen thousand yeah. dollars here twenty thousand dollars here projects that we're just going to pick away in other ways right so. right that sounds good um are there any questions from anybody on the projects or on the on the question that'll be on the ballot on monday um hearing yeah. none um how much money do you actually have in your stabilization fund now I think we put in fifty thousand when we created it, right? So it's not we. So to put money away into the stabilization account, you know, we have 
um, we've been using E and D through that um, in that way. So we've been using it. Um, we've been using E and D to um, take care of capital projects for the building, um, purchasing items and that kind of things that fell outside the budget when we didn't go to the towns. So in year, it, it's been that kind of debate: Do we just do we use the money that way, or do you put it into an account? You, you follow my way. It's just yeah, it's kind of but, an accounting thing. But so we haven't put a lot of money into that. Um, but, and this committee was, you know, talking about creating that account. And four or five um, years ago, you had over four hundred thousand in there, if I recall. You're talking about? No, I don't no. believe that's correct. No, I'm talking about. In fact, we had about four hundred thousand dollars of E and D one year. Yes, and then the following year, we we we. Uh, Part of the assessment, we knocked off $150,000 off the assessment to the towns. And so basically, capital. you know, taking that savings back to the towns and holding on to the remainder for, um, you know, if whatever comes up. So, and then, you know, picking away at capital projects with that. So, or larger projects would be capital projects. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Does that make sense? Yep. Do you have a question, Chris? Yeah, what's the total asset? I don't know the answer to that. We can get that, but because one point eight million over ten years actually seems low. It, it, it there's a yeah there's a lot more work to be done for sure, but um, but yeah as a percentage of the value and what you want that building to maintain its value over the years and you know students keep coming and families moving to town and it's an investment it's it's definitely a, an asset we have. Right. I mean the original numbers that we brought forward were probably twice this. We were looking at $3.4 million on the initial if we we're going to kind of go through and fix every single problem. Um, the feedback we got from the committee, which, you know, with the select board members there, that, that it really wasn't, we weren't going to be able to get that through. So we, we uh, kind of reduced what we were looking for, put the major projects there, um, and then do the smaller ones. Right. Out of the way. Yep. And also not to go beyond 10 years, because the other idea is that we're gonna have a new host of problems in ten. Let's be honest, we got buildings and structures here, so in ten years there'll be a new host of problems because um, we can only project so far out. So we're trying right. to say this is our honest look at what we can see in the next ten years uh, for major costs. You know, you know, another ten year, you know, another right. twenty years. You know, in a forty year building, you're gonna be looking at right. a lot of other kind of yep. um, changes. So. And that's why I said that that committee would be great to kind of keep rolling and just every year looking at what's right. coming on a year eleven. You know. Right keep looking in the future what yep. we can do so well thank you very much sure. any other questions from anyone all righty thank you very much I appreciate you coming out and you. giving some info mm -hmm. um, the next item oh question I, I, I have a, wanted to catch the public comment time that's at 9 30 I go to bed before that. Is there 9 any chance? Where do you get 9 30? I don't I'm not gonna be here at 9 30. It's just at the end. <laughs> it's just at the it's just at the end. I'm, I'm efficient. Just, <laughs> there's no way we're gonna be here at 9 30. Okay. Yep, we'll get we'll get to that. So we've got other people that are on the yeah, on the okay. schedule, but we'll as soon as we can I'll bring you in for sure. Um, so that it, on the same theme of, of discussing the ballot questions, our next ballot question would be the um, the debt exclusion for the sewer project that was approved at town meeting this year. So um, we've invited David Prickett, who's our engineer on the project, um, to come forward and just, again, give us an update where you're at on sure. several things and where we're going, hopefully. Oh, got a if approved. If that's okay. Oh, I'd love it, yeah, that'd be great. Did you guys have a chance to print the stuff from this afternoon yet? Uh, I did only print the one thing I got from you, but I, no, I did not. I I oh, not, maybe I didn't. No. Yeah, I have the draft. Yeah, the draft one I printed. So I do have one copy of that here, but I, David does not yet, no. I don't think. I just forwarded okay, great. it. <laughs> I didn't print it. <laughs> I'll leave one here. Oh, great. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, 5.30. It's all right. No one told me. What? Okay. It was on the agenda. <laughs> That's it, right. We're, we're just talking about schools at the moment. So oh. the question is all we've done so far. So um, you're not late. I, Too late. Uh, I talked to Natalie yesterday about school. Yeah. We're just talking about the ballot question at the moment. Oh. So, so we're all done with that. Um, so thank you, David. For yeah, coming. no problem. Take yeah. your time and get settled. There's, um, yep. there's extra copies of the handout. If Great. members of the public would like to follow. Yep. Um, 
So yeah, again, just thanks for coming, and yeah. we're hoping to kind of get an update on where we're where we're at and going forward. So if anyone, yeah. Wants well, let to me start by trying to give a yeah. Again, you know, every time you give an engineer an opportunity to talk, you try to keep it brief. <laughs> it's 50-50. I've, got, I've right? got one of these. We'll try to do a little five-minute kind of overview and then Good. circle back That's to perfect. questions. So um, just kind of follow along on the handout here. Um, quick update, um, just in terms of old business projects, the wastewater condition assessment and needs analysis project that we worked on uh, last fall into the winter. Mm -hmm. uh, that draft report was completed. Uh, you may recall that it had an implementation plan uh, that was a series of four phases over 13 years. Yep. As soon as we uh, hit print on that uh, draft, uh, we were already juggling the phases and you know moving things around with yep. the public and everything. Right. So that kind of sits in uh, on the back burner until such time as you have you and the public have an opportunity to get through Monday night and consider. Yep possible funding finance solutions for wastewater projects, and then we'll finalize that based on the decisions that you and the public make. Yep. Um, as we move forward, um, another thing engineers like to do is come up with acronyms and numbers and everything, but we're essentially talking about upgrades to the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility, and it's been broken up into three buckets. Um, the first one, phase 1A, uh, was a project that was moved along quicker, a smaller project, million dollar, to deal with the existing secondary clarifier and replace the innards of that. And that is ongoing, that is on track, the design is active. We'll have a workshop tomorrow morning with town staff uh, yeah. at the treatment plant to go over some of those things. Um, right on the heels of that meeting, we'll be talking about putting out a uh, procurement phase for chapter 30B goods and services to kind of pre-order the clarifier equipment yep. and save some time. Yep. And then thereafter, kind of late summer, we'll be putting out a contract for general bid to have a contractor come in and set up temporary clarifier and, and, and install that work. So the hope is that that work will occur um, late fall into the winter and next spring. Um, mm -hmm. And based on uh, some information from TEP that we received today, um, that timeline works. It's um, on board with that. So that's yep. on track. Good. Um, is there, Dave, is there any issues with working, um, you know, in the colder months? Oh yeah, lots of them. Yep. Really unhappy workers. Um, <laughs> I mean, that clarifier will be taken offline um, for things that are weather sensitive, coatings, uh, concrete work. Um, but again, based on the schedule and the timeline from DEP, we have until the middle of next summer to finish that project, yeah. which gives us, extensions that you know, good. they can get the steel work set, they can use the crane through the winter. Um, you know, you these can lead times can be tricky right cement, now. It's 12 so. to 16 weeks lead time for the equipment, but We'll figure it out. We don't want to box the potential contractors in so aggressively that they don't want to bid the job. Right. Yeah. So we'll try to give okay. them a little bit of leash there. Yep. So and DEP's worked well with us on that. DEP so has been, and we'll, been we'll get good. to that one last. Yep. Uh, but uh, that, yep. that was new information today. Yep. Um, you also may recall that we've been working aggressively together uh, with the town and uh, town manager representatives to try to find grants and loans. Mm -hmm. So we submitted a USDA funding application uh, earlier this year for what's being termed phase 1B. So at the time that was, I don't know, about two thirds of the big work at the South Deerfield plant to the tune of about $11 million. Yep. That application is in with USDA. Um, there are a couple of strings left to tie. Um, one was related to some permitting on floodplain. The other was related to um, uh, endangered species and confirming that the project would have no impact. Um, it was sturgeon and dragonfly and we worked through that with, with uh, fisheries and wildlife. Yeah. And the last one was an administrative thing with um, some registration number with, with, with the, the feds. Town. I mean, there's always something and every right. time you do one of these, there's, it's like buying a car. Yeah. There's 10 more pieces of paper to sign every time you go or more kit yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So that's in, um, USDA has given us a, um, I'll call a soft commitment to the tune of about a $2.64 million grant, uh, which represents about a quarter of the project cost for phase 1B, um, and is confident that they'll be able to offer us the best interest rate, which again, they term poverty interest rate. Um, that's nothing that anyone in the town uh, should consider a bad thing. No. It just means that that's their, their lowest interest rate based on your underwriting criteria. So right now that's at 2.5%. That changes quarterly until we have a final commitment uh, so that's subject to whatever happens at the federal level with interest rates. It actually might come down. I hope so. Yeah, it was two and a quarter a year ago for what it's worth. Yep. Yeah. So it might come down. 
Um, I believe, and, and uh, USDA has a new representative uh, over there, Jen Lurch, who I had a chance to meet last week on another oh, project. Yep. Uh, she's very committed to helping communities and her constituency. Um, I'd suggest that together yes, we form a little uh, field trip and, and go see her in Amherst and yep. uh, see if we can beg for I some more grant money. Yeah, let's yep. do so, that. Yep. Um, that's something we should do. You know, let's see what happens Monday. Yeah. Um, right. You know, right. Obviously, exactly. that's a, one of the prerequisites relative to getting the firm commitment. Yep. Okay. Phase two, um, that was the balance of the $19 million. So at the annual town meeting, you asked the residents to take the first step in the appropriation of $19 million, which is basically all the work at the South Deerfield plant. Um, at one point, we had that kind of staggered, as you may recall, did. with some South Deerfield work, some old Deerfield work. I think the town overall, Keith, Kevin, representatives from the select board all kind of felt like let's let's see if we can't deal with South Deerfield plant uh, altogether so the USD application that was submitted initially covered just phase 1b so the mm -hmm. 11 million so if we do decide that we want to pursue the entire upgrade at the South Deerfield plant we'll have to amend that application so that would be one of the talking points uh, with USDA this is in your experience gone. what's the chance of getting more money well, you know, they get money and year to year, year Carolyn. Right. So some of it is how much grant money they have. I'm, I'm confident that we can get whatever we want relative to loan, but the key, as we've discussed, is grant. at least trying to get to that 25% grant threshold. Um, based on the underwriting, um, we are eligible for something closer to 45%. Um, we just received the, the draft administrative consent order from DEP earlier today. That should help. Um, I think that now it comes down to, I think you've used the word hustle. Mm -hmm. So we've got to hustle to, to, to try to, it's a good thing. <laughs> In sports and trying to find money for the town. She's um, good at that. So that, that'll be the next step there. And you know, I think we've always said publicly that you know, you've asked the residents to act on their behalf, but mm -hmm. you wouldn't do so until you had right. a package that you felt was the right package for the project. So. Let's see what we can do with the money before we, you know, go Commit. through something official. But phase 1B looks pretty good. I mean, if first cut, we're at roughly 25% grant at 2.5% interest. That's yeah. it's a pretty good formula that we can work with. And mm -hmm. we've kind of, you know, shown some figures and stuff that uh, we don't need to get into this evening. But right. um, that's an attainable solution. Uh, we would certainly want to get more grant money if you were going to encumber a $19 million project. Right. Yeah. And that's when we would want to definitely talk to McGovern's office because mm -hmm. you know he was on the agricultural committee mm -hmm. and now he's in um you know in yeah. another committee that is just as powerful and also that's we need to reach out to Richie Neal's mm -hmm. office because he's ways and means exactly and I I think we could squeeze that I think that grant those are those are all great up. Uh, yeah. opportunities to do what we need to do and like I said, they get money once a year. Their annual cycle starts December 1st in theory, but the mm -hmm. feds never have a budget in place. No. It's usually like March, April right. by the time. But th mm -hmm. and that, that's why, uh, you know, I really like us to get moving on this because mm -hmm. they're just now sorting out this kind of stuff. I yeah, and right. I also, um, you know, I think it will be really important because we, we want to incorporate some of the, you know, climate change stuff mm -hmm. we can pay yeah the resiliency stuff we can pay out of a d different pot yep and we want to mod so we want to modify our mvp program to make sure that we pick this up there's still some variables but we're trying to slowly pick yep. them off and right get a lot of work equation a little bit more tangible right mm -hmm. and and then, and then if it were i heard about some more money for green communities so we'd want to make mm -hmm. sure that we have you know, some green operations down there. I think USDA is, um, has a long track record of working with other programs. I think we recognize that they need to be the, the framework of the skeleton for financing yes. and other things that we can wrap around them, whether it be mass DEP energy efficiency grants, which came out last year, which I know we passed on that. We weren't quite ready. You know, a couple hundred thousand, a half million yeah. here and there. You know, those are the types of things that, that Make soften. Make difference. Yeah. The, the, the net impact per month for the customers. Well, that's what Absolutely. I'm thinking of. You know, yeah. we should be able to do that relatively well. especially well. with all the, the energy efficiency, we're, you know, with the electrical yeah. upgrades and, you know. There are definitely the opportunities. And, you know, yeah. right now we're trying to 
just get you that buffalo exactly. that you can throw on the table and say, you know, okay, we, this. we can we can make it. this work. Now let's yep. fine tune it with everything else that yep. you know Carolyn can help us work work yeah. through. Yeah, sounds good. Well, it's just you have to put FaceTime in. Understood. So, yeah, you know, it's well, you haven't you have a new face in Amherst. Um, yep, and she's, and that's, she's been I mean, this is already a, very you know kind of establishing herself and the way she does business in a good way for, good. for communities in Western Mass. And I think That's it, great. When, as soon as I heard this in another town, I think I yeah. wasn't back in the car for five minutes and I called Trevor and said, yeah. we need to set up a meeting because yeah. I think you have a, a we captive have a new, audience. We have a new state conservationist too, so great. it would be a double whammy to yeah. go down there. Understood. Absolutely. That'd be great. That'd be great. So down to the last item. So uh, that was the crash course on phases 1A, 1B, and 2. Yep. So. 1A is real, ongoing, 1B uh, to be determined after Monday night, mm -hmm. and a firm commitment from USDA, and 2 is to be determined. I don't think we have a right. strong recommendation either way yet until we yeah. formalize that. DEP um, submitted today by email uh, to the town a copy of the draft administrative consent order. Um, we had two separate enforce uh, enforcement actions, administrative orders related to the treatment plant last fall one was related to the clarifier the other was related to some safety concerns with the gas chlorine system for disinfection yep um, we asked for some flexibility and implementation schedule uh, DEP has um, been kept in the loop <coughs> relative to the progress that you made with planning and the town's general intent to move forward including the vote uh, at annual town meeting so they've articulated what I would describe as kind of a a draft order, again, subject to your input, legal input, technical input, that says here's a firm date for finalizing the state II requirements, which, again, are in draft and submitted to the town to be finalized. The clarifier replacement, a firm schedule for that, which we said we just couldn't get it done in 90 days last right. year. It was just impossible. Yep. And then the third thing, it has language in there that I think is going to help us most securing grants and loans. And it basically says the town you know, has demonstrated an intent to move forward with phases 1B and 2, you know, yep. subject. It, it doesn't have teeth per se, but it does give us some teeth relative to going after those grants and loans. So. It shows that we have these needs. Exactly. Yep. So you have that. I haven't even had a chance to review it thoroughly. Yep. We literally got it, you know, early afternoon. Yep. Um, I know Diana's already had a chance to forward that on to legal counsel. Yes. Um, so um, that'll be a, a topic of discussion at a future workshop. Yep. Um, but I view that as a positive thing in light of your direction. So mm -hmm. that's uh, wastewater projects update crash course for today. But I'm right. happy to answer any questions that and you I, or the residents may yeah. have leading up to the to Monday. Perfect. And yeah, really, this this um, discussion, other than just kind of where we're at, was um, again like the schools was to um, not pro or con for your vote on Monday, but just um, any questions you may have about about the. The, the question on the ballot or a question on the project or anything we could try to answer if anyone had any anything they wanted to ask or if they feel comfortable that's fine too we just want to make that you know this opportunity get the awareness out that there is an election on Monday so with two ballot questions on it and those were the two items and then if there's any other questions on this topic itself we're happy to answer those um, I guess my, one of my questions and I apologize for being late I honestly didn't know it was a 530 meeting um, would be just could you just go over the timeline again um i think people were i mean i have a question in my mind on some of the timeline the only thing i know that we're really committed on at this point is the clarifier that's you know, repla placement yeah. yep but in your mind could you theoretically go through what how we would probably approach this sure so on the clarifier project that one's pretty vanilla um you're going through the design right now You'll be two, two phases of bidding, an equipment phase and a contractor phase that'll start in July and go through uh, August, early September. You're then looking at a contract period that'll be more paperwork before construction, but construction probably close to the beginning of the year, mm -hmm. probably January through April, May, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, and then relative to a potential, whether it's phase 1B or 1B and 2, if you chose to move forward with a project, if you, um, if after Monday night the residents decide that they want to move forward with this project, um, then you'd be looking at a design phase in fiscal 2020 of mm -hmm. about a year. 
Yeah. Um, give or take. I when mean, we get to like 25 percent, we decide yeah, exactly think, what we're going to do. And I do. think within, I'll come back and I'll talk about some mm -hmm. kind of key milestones. But yep. if you'd envision design for fiscal 2020 uh, construction for two, two and a half years thereafter. So we've always projected what the rates would look like in fiscal 23-ish, 24-ish. Mm -hmm. um, the debt doesn't really hit you uh, until worst case halfway through the project, best case 75% through the project, but thereabouts. Um, you'll have some soft costs along the way. Right. Um, you'll have some short-term financing costs along the way, but those aren't going to be the things that, that really impact the homeowners. Within the design phase, if you do move forward with um, some, element, some element of an upgrade at South Deerfield Plant beyond the clarifier, um, one of the key milestones will be at about the 25% design phase. Um, we would call that like basis of design. There's been a lot of talk over the last few years about, um, and everyone has different opinions about the type of equipment to go in the plant, the cost associated with um, proprietary equipment, non-proprietary. I think as a group articulating your vision together at that 25%. It's kind of like when you're doing a project at home, eh, you want to do a kitchen project, you don't really know everything you want till you start seeing samples and everything else. Yeah. But at that 25% design point, if we're not, if you and your team is not on, this, on, the, on the same page, that's, that's the point at which things diverge and become uh, fractured. Right. Um, so at 25%, if everybody is lined up and ready to go, then, then it's X's and O's. You know, the engineering is the simplest element of the project. It's all public communication, you know, discussions, making sure people uh, understand each other's opinions, et cetera. So that'll be, you know, in theory, that's the first three, four months of the design phase. So mm -hmm. um, in all likelihood, you probably, that's like a second quarter type thing. Yep. You know, if, if things pass on Monday, you're going to get into the new fiscal year. It's going to take a little time to execute a contract and right. get going. And then in the fall, uh, it'd be that that's when you'd be going through a lot of those discussions. And um, that's where you make all the decisions from there on forward. It's just yep. pretty simple. Put pen to paper, get the project out to bid, and then, you know, battle with the contractor to get it all done. Right. It's a treatment plant. You've got to keep it running. Yes, so that's the key. There's, there's the whole time. complexities with that element of construction that don't often exist elsewhere. Yeah. Okay. I think we, we need to have a public process and a committee process. And mm -hmm. I, it's, I was just wondering how, you know, we need to sort out how we're going to do that. Yeah, see where the vote comes down Monday and then... Work from there, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Okay. Yep, yeah. we have a good, a good... Your next decision roadmap. after Monday will be... Are you going to ask for 19 million or stick with the 11 and a half? Right. right. That's going to be exactly. the next decision point. Mm -hmm. And then from that point forward, go get the money. And once it's secured, execute. My the my um, if if there if we tell the USDA that we're going for the you know the complete project, the 19 million, we would apply for more grant money. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you would. Yep. But if we were um, to break it down and hold off a little bit mm -hmm. on that seven, would you be able to give us the evaluation of, you know, I mean, construction costs are probably between four and 5% inflationary. Yeah. So we would have be able to evaluate what are the opportunities of doing it now versus yep. the opportunities of doing it later. And, you know, we, we really should research, you know, what, what other programs there might be out there for infrastructure those calculations yeah. are pretty yep. linear. I mean there is a lot of stuff I mean I, yesterday I yes. spent a lot of time trying to hustle to, about trying to figure out and and there are actually several interesting process you know prospects I, I mean nothing's been funded yet but, of course but yeah uh, I agree. There, but Anywhere there is there is an acknowledgement that no infrastructure projects have been done right. for a couple of years now and so the state you know, is is thinking of different bond bills, and there might be some money. So, yeah. you know, waiting a little bit on some of this stuff might. We evaluate. Yeah, I think we evaluate um, all that. Or and options. or if we, I mean, is it? it I guess my I, what I want to know is, it, can we break it up in a way that we could have, be, have some flexibility in this and trying to track down funding? Yeah, there was some strategy in the the, mm -hmm. the formulation of phase one, B, and two. I mean right. that. You can almost never go 50-50. It's a treatment plant. So, like, you know, you it's kind of like, do we do thing. the lung transplant yeah. and yes. the, the heart? 
right. so right. we ended up with that 11 point whatever it is four million dollar first phase that's kind of remember that was going to be second clarifier headworks improvements to solids handling right yeah. um you know and really that's sort like, of one block that's one block and then the next block dealt more with the lungs the fixing the aeration system and mm -hmm. there's some things that go on too with keith that you know we'll talk about tomorrow in the workshop that impact the decision him. making right. um my gut feel is that USDA is going to be the only source of significant funding, either in the form of grant or low interest, long-term loan. I think that peripheral opportunities to chip away yeah. at smaller standalone pieces will be good. I think that the economics will show you that the cost of deferring at 4.32% annual interest, uh, construction inflation <laughs> versus 2.5% interest rate, you know, uh, the cost of benefit. yeah I it's know. just Wait. a money formula yeah. you right. just, well it's it's speculation it, you, but you I may know. as we've always said you may make the decision to push the tail end of the plan upgrade further off yeah and that's a decision that you can make an, an informed decision based on data yeah, yep. on the data we have that's yep. right absolutely no that's good well so, i think we'll have the opportunity to yeah. touch base with our both our state people and the, and the federal people and get mm. a feeling for this mm -hmm. yep so no I, so I just right I didn't want to be concrete about it until we had that information. It's a good decision. If the town moves forward all the way to phase two and that's complete, what percentage utilization of that plant will be? Was it twenty five percent, thirty percent? I don't know off the top of my head. I can tell you that there was some strategy in trying to upgrade the South Deerfield plant as a whole first because that plant when upgraded has the capacity to take the whole town. Right, so there's always been talk about the timing of whether Old Deerfield gets upgraded or not. Uh, what I can tell you that that plant, you'd still upgrade it to its permitted design capacity. And right now you're not utilizing all of it. It's more than half. Um, it's tricky because there's flow and then there's the concentration of the wastewater. Mm -hmm. And right now you have some customers that discharge some really high strength wastewater. So even though your flows aren't quite to the top of the bottle, you know, it's pretty potent stuff that comes in periodically, um, mm -hmm. which complicates things. And that's one of the things I was alluding to, the other moving parts. Um, it's more than half, less than three quarters right now. Does that help? Well, I don't know off the know, top of my head exactly. To me, it's, you know, if we're going to be doing all this work, we want to be able to have the capability of expanding the sewer system within Bingo. the town. Bingo. And not have to redo everything all over yes, again. Yes, that, that's our goal. Yep. You have enough capacity at that plant um, to serve the needs of Deerfield for generations. That's, yep. that's a luxury some communities don't have. But, I mean, right now you've got one foot <laughs> at the treatment plant, literally. I mean, With, you know, uh, I, I, I shouldn't use these analogies. No, it's you know, true. But they're... This is the only plant I've ever seen in my career with one secondary clarifier, right? You just don't build something for wastewater with one of something because when it breaks, You're this is where we're at. Yeah. Um, so there's some, there's some unique things there. You, you know, you don't use all the tanks that are there right now. So the lungs at the treatment plant, they don't quite have the horsepower in the aeration system to provide enough oxygen to mix it and keep it going. So that's one of the elements of the upgrades at the South Tier Field plant is to get that up to snuff so that you can actively use all this. So there's, mm. we could pull in but I can definitively players. say that the treatment plant has enough capacity yeah. for not only current needs, but future needs for generations. And we do these build-out analyses in these projects, and we anticipate that, you know, hundreds of customers are coming every year. I wish. Kevin's not here tonight. I would venture to guess that, you know, maybe, maybe 10 or 15 new connections per year in terms of is historically. And you may have years where maybe you see like a 50 or something and then zeros right. for three years. So... I think even 15 new connections per year is probably conservative. Um, but if something came to the town right. and you do have the upgraded plant, right now the challenge is you can't quite put into the plant what it says you can on paper. Right? You've got a permit for about a million gallons a day. You can't quite put a million gallons a day through there right now without adding the foot and the lungs and yeah. everything else. Okay. Good. Any oh, question? I'm kind of behind the sequence on this. I haven't been paying attention like I probably should. Well, that's why I'm glad you're here today. That's why I am here today. One yes. of the reasons I'm Good. here. And I'm just curious about, um, so 
uh, if when, on Monday we vote, are we voting for you all to spend the money? Is there additional bidding process? Yeah, it's a whole lot to go ahead. So um, town meeting voted already right. to, approve, that to approve that. Yeah. Yep. And then so this is to the, really the only question on Monday is whether you will you will debt exclude that so that um, it doesn't raise our tax rate forever. Right. Once it's done, it's paid off. So once we get to that point, we still are in a holding pattern until we hear from USDA. Then we put all the plans together and decide, okay, we have the, the funding. The process is done. Mr. Prickett's our man. Is that, is that, where are we in that process? Uh, for for the, what we've been doing so far, yes. The town still needs to decide whether we'd want to look at other engineers or have um, or have some um, um, third, party. third party review, you know, of the work, and I think I think David's open to that as well. And so we're looking at a lot of different ways to kind of figure this out in the future. But, but there right, are no more required bit, um, RFPs or, or proposals. That phase is done for engineering. No, for the construction. Oh yeah, all of that still needs to get done. Oh, oh, yeah, we none, done any yeah, of that. we haven't done any. That's what we're talking about the potential okay, so time. Yeah, just right at the beginning. Right, we're at the beginning stage right now, where we're asking for the ability, but we're not anywhere near going out and collecting money. And we need to. We have a lot of planning okay. still left to do. We have a blueprint, kind of a you know roadmap of what we right. think needs to get done based on the assessment. But yes, all that bidding stuff needs to happen still. Yep, quite a bit of work to do. Skip, you you were involved with the building of the school. I was. And basically, we're at the point of hiring the architect. Yeah. So everything after that is still right. Yeah, bit good analogy. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Skip. Sure. You ha you have to be able to, you know, um, have the money. You know, have yeah, the authority. No, I get, I get yep. that part. To even I just move wasn't forward. sure how far the process was yep. along when yep. you asked for the money. Sure. You asked for the approval of the money. Yep. And this, is, and this is also to get us to the USDA to um, commit the money firmly right. to us so we're and not kind of, give it to somebody else. And we're running a little bit ahead by asking for all that. We just felt like, okay, let's tell the residents what we're really looking at here so they, they're on board and we don't have to keep coming back and asking right. for a little more and just say, <coughs> here's where we're at. And then we'll, you know, we'll, if, if they grant us that ability to debt exclude it, we'll just go forward and uh, a little at a time and keep everybody educated as we're going. You, you, the last couple of years, USDA hasn't gotten any money for loan, you know, for, for grant. Pro and somewhere, somehow, we got still like $700 million a, a dedicated to the state for, you know, it was like. Six million to the or six, state. Six. It, w it, it was a small, it was a leftover from a project, I'm sure, right, because it's right. a random number and it's very small. Yeah. But we're getting practically half of it. So. You know, I mean, that's Absolutely. why we're kind of hustling because three million is better than nothing. Mm -hmm. And and it, I mean, or there hasn't been any infrastructure. I mean, the frustration is there's been no infrastructure money anywhere in the country, and so you know that's why there was some talk at the state house yesterday of having our, our own state program because it's been really. I mean, everybody's in the same boat. There's just mm -hmm. no projects being done. So um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Can I add to, to sure. that, Carolyn? Yeah, please. So you, you hit the nail on the head. Historically, Massachusetts, last few years, when they have been funded, got about $10 million in grant for water wastewater. The loan is, I don't want to say limitless, but your ability to get USDA loan, they fund their program entirely from the interest on the loans. I know it's a low interest rate, but on a 40-year note, you can understand yeah, how they'd up. make money. Um, yep. What happens now is that if we want more grant, and we, and we do, and we're going to go hustling for it, any states that utilize less than half percent of half of their allocation goes back to the national pool. So at that point, you compete with projects all over the country, and it's it's a bit of a crapshoot in timing because you know you could have a project that's doing a wastewater system in rural North Dakota, where like the median household income might literally be like less than twenty thousand dollars. Again, this mm -hmm. is not judgment or anything; it's just a reality. So when they underwrite that project against yours. At that particular moment, it might not be advantageous for us. Um, right. So some of it is timing, some of it is repeat, but that's the process that we're trying to get through. Unfortunately, they can't give us a commitment in writing until you have an appropriation. And right, right. now you have half of that. Right. So the ask, as you said, was 
Monday night. Not necessarily to move forward. Right. But just the ability if we if the we ability do, if, if to, everything, to, to get that. Yep. Everything falls in place. And so again, a lot, of, and a lot we, of moving parts. And we want to lock down a grant if it happens to come across our radar. So, yep. I mean, that's the other thing. Yep. So. Uh, Chris, you had a question? Yeah, strategically, when does the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant get folded into these projections in terms of upgrades, financing, budgeting, et cetera? That's a great question. So when, when the assessment came out, <coughs> the way we had first talked about this was to do major needs at South Deerfield, then next phase was major needs at Old Deerfield, then the next phase was come back and finish out S South Deerfield, and then come back and finish out. And, and in the middle of all of that, uh, sprinkling in the I, I and I, the pipe and the structure work. So, um, but based on conversations with the people who were on the sewer study committee and just us and Dave and finance committee, we all kind of said, well, if we're jumping in and we're gonna have the guys there and if we can get it, if we upgrade the South Deerfield plant first that can accept everything from the town so then we have a little bit longer to decide that plan is in just as bad shape if not worse in some areas and that needs to be addressed but then we have the opportunity to decide do we spend all the money and upgrade that where it's in a very vulnerable situation or do we have another partner come to town in the meantime and we have the ability to then force main all of that to our new plant which can take it and, and by doing that, picking up some development off 5 and 10, other users in areas, um, or maybe that's not feasible. So we have a little bit more time. We know we have to address it. And, and so the overall plan was about 32, 33 million, maybe 36 million. It fluctuates depending on when you do it and all and how much you do. But so it, it's on our radar, but really um, we felt the smartest thing because it's the bulk of what we do and the bulk of the rate payers needed um, are, are in South Deerfield. So if we get that plant up to speed, then we can, we can have a little more options for what, what may happen down the road there. Uh, but it, it's coming, we just gotta figure out really what we do. Is it too cost, you know, not cost effective to get it down here? Or, or in the long term, is it a less risk for the people up there? Because it's right on the river, and Irene was really close. I mean, it flooded, and Irene was really close. It, we know we'll have another storm and it's, it's just, uh, so there's a lot to kind of take in up there. It's different than where we're at down here, so. Okay. Um, any other questions about this or about the question on Monday or? Hearing none, I thank you very much Thanks for, for coming. Time, I really appreciate it. it. Dave, yeah. I really thank you. It's good to get an update and we'll talk educate so. people. Yeah. Yes. Talk thank first. you for your willingness to yeah. no work on our behalf. On Happy to be here. Yep. Have a good night. Right. So, um, moving on with the uh, um, hearings, uh, our next hearing um, would be a, a compliance hearing for uh, liquor license violation at Spirit Shop at 53 um, C South Main Street. Uh, Mr. Steve Schechterly is here. Brian Ravish is here. And um, come on up. How are you, Steve? Good to see you. Good, good. Um, let me just see here. Diane, do I need to read anything? You have a script, basically, Trevor, that tells you you announce the matter, meaning read the... Um, Help me with that. Basically, it's, it's in your packet. Um, yeah, so that's the violation notice, yep. correct? So, um, oh, gotcha, gotcha, You gotcha. can read that, Perfect. and then okay. you can just start from... Yep. Number two. So... Um, Do you want me to read the notice of hearing? I'll do that. Yeah. And then I'll move on. So um, notice of hearing license number 00014-BK-0276. Um, dear Mr. Schechterly, please advise that on June 19th, 2019 at six, we thought 15, but thanks for being patient. Um, the town of Deerfield, uh, uh, the Deerfield Select Board sitting as a local licensing authority will conduct a hearing at the Deerfield Town Hall, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass, pursuant to to provisions of general laws, chapter 138, section 64, to determine whether the South Deerfield, that the Deerfield Spirit Shop, the holder of the license issued pursuant to general laws, chapter 138, section 15, to conduct business at the premises located at 53C South Main Street, South Deerfield, 
Mass has violated the provisions of said chapter 138 or any rules and regulations promulgated under the authority of that chapter, and if such violation is found to have occurred, whether such license should be modified, suspended, revoked uh, in accordance with General Laws Chapter 138, Section 23. The matter is to be discussed is whether on or about May 30th, 2019, Spirit Shop sold alcohol beverages to an underage person in violation of General Laws Chapter 138, Section 34. The Select Board will determine whether there is satisfactory proof of a violation and whether as a consequence of said violation, the Deerfield Spirit Shop license should be modified, suspended, or revoked in accordance to General Laws Chapter 138, Section 23. Uh, the hearing will be held Pursuant to the provisions of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, you may appear on behalf of your, um, on your own behalf or with an attorney and will have the opportunity to present witness um, for your information and review a uh, copy of the police report concerning alleged violation is the above reference establishment is attached. So that's where we're at. Um, let's see, we had, um, Let's see, this is a report by the police chief and from officer, uh, to the police chief, Officer Ravish, um, on May 30th, 2019. With your permission, alcohol stings were conducted in the town of Deerfield. All stores that sell alcohol were checked by two 18-year-old students from Frontier Regional High. Both students used their Massachusetts assigned driver's license that were assigned by the Registry of Motor Vehicles. At 7.09 p.m., the male student entered the spirit shop. The male student selected a, a six pack of Bud Light to purchase. Upon placing the six pack on the counter, the clerk did not ask for uh, the male student's identification. The male student then purchased the Bud Light beer from the female clerk. The male student then exited the store with the six pack of Bud Light in his hand. The female clerk was then spoken to by Sergeant Bates and Officer Ravish. The clerk stated that she did not check the male's uh, student's identification and offered no excuse as to why she did not check the identification. Oh. Officer Ravis advised the clerk that all customers need to have their identif identification checked. The clerk was advised that a report would be made out to the Deerfield Police Chief uh, for follow-up investigation. Um, so the process is, um, so announce the matter, which I did in the matter of Spirit Shop. Um, I read this already. Um, open the hearing. So swearing in, um, prior to any um, offering of advice, I asked uh, that if there is anyone here who will be presenting evidence to the board to stand, raise your right hand and repeat after me. That's Officer so, Officer Ravish. Aye. Aye. Uh, Officer Ravish, state Aye. your name. Officer Ravish. Uh, swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you. Um, so who will be present? So anyone? Uh, so you basically Steve, so. read the allegation, yep. but if he has I any did. more information to provide, yes, we can. Yes. Yep. So in, um, do you have any other uh, information you want to provide, or is that sufficient? Uh, no, that that's covers it. That that covers it. Okay. Um, and then uh, to invite the spirit shop to speak, present ed evidence, and offer any witness testimony. So welcome to. So have a. Okay. Well. Thank you. Um, you have to swear. Oh, let me swear you in as well. Oh, so okay. Um, I, I, Stephen Shackley. Stephen Shackley. Um, let's see. Uh, swear the testimony I'm about to provide uh, is the whole truth. I swear that the testimony I'm, I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Steve. Um, I first want to uh, say that I do not enjoy being in front of the board. I know you don't. In, in these circumstances. Thank you. It's rather embarrassing. Yep. Um, Thank you. Um, but I'm not here to um, claim innocence. I'm not here to make excuses. There, yep. there is no excuse. Um, the issue that Officer Ravish presented to you is true. It happened. Yep. Um, and we we have a zero tolerance policy for this. Yep. Obviously, it's of it's been um, everything that I handed you um, is pretty much just uh, 
instead of making excuses for why this particular clerk did not ask for an ID, mm -hmm. I thought it would be prudent to let the board and the town know what we are doing to be proactive. What have we done Thank you. Um, to make this not happen again? Right. Um, so what, what you have there basically uh, in the beginning is um, the Massachusetts Package Store Association's uh, beverage alcohol training okay. um, guide. Yep. Um, we have a, a bit of unfortunate irony here. Um, I recently just joined the board of the Massachusetts Package Stores Association, one of which one of their primary objectives is um, ensuring that you know the independent package store owners in the state of Massachusetts serve their community safely right so here I am yep um, kind of I know you're not happy a little bit here. embarrassed yeah, um, I get it so anyway um, the incident um, you know we we watched it on on surveillance as soon as we found out okay um, she she carted the person before um, ran his ID through our machine um, and then for whatever reason she did not card the, the student who came in for the compliance check I don't know why right. um, you know we we immediately held a meeting with with our management team uh, the next day because this is not this is not it's not allowed it's not good it's right. not it's not supposed to happen um, that particular clerk was let go because we had had a meeting informing all of and we had our management team individually talk to each employee saying we cannot mm -hmm. we need to ID everybody we cannot not ID everybody you know right. there are compliance checks we cannot fail a compliance check yeah. she was told about this and yet for whatever reason she didn't card everybody right and here we are so yeah anyway that's that's a scenario um, we all of the stuff that I've given you we had already always have had implemented you know yeah. signage um, there's the page you're looking at now is um, the second page is our we did add um, to our employee handbook a section on uh, serving safely, mm -hmm. uh, which is page two. Yep. Um, just highlighting, you know, so that when we do make new hires, it's written right there. They sign the handbook, um, so they know that um, BAT training, which is specific to our industry, which is put on by the Massachusetts pa Package Store Association, um, we we do that anyway. Um, they only offer at this time three training sessions per year based on need. Right. Um, so our our issue is we have high turnover, you know, with clerks, right. you know, part time help, students coming going, um, you know, getting everybody to the BAT trainings is a challenge. But at every session we do, the BAT training is good for three years. Um, we rarely have a clerk that is around that long, so gotcha. we're going frequently. Yeah. Um, the other bit of irony is the BAT training, the most recent one, happened to be yesterday. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And you know, we had a, a van load of people for that. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Hey, um, but you know, that was, hear going, that. that was going <laughs> yeah. to happen anyway. Um, yep. So. Yeah. You know what? What can we do? You know, I I have the I have complete faith in my management team. Uh, Jake um, runs the store. Jake Brennan. Um, he's he's in charge of pretty much you know all the hiring. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we've we've had long discussions. What can we do? You know, we you can talk to your um, your clerks yeah. who are you know typically using us as a stepping stone, mm -hmm. we 
we take pride in our jobs. You know, we're all career people. You know, my management team, right. they've been with me for, some of them for 25 years, right. um, 18 years. Um, so. And you haven't been before this board for a violation in the past, correct? Not, yeah. not in front of the right. alcohol board. Yeah. Um, I right? want you to know I, I really do appreciate that you take it so seriously. I do, and well, I know and you do. It's, and, it's, and it's, it's do. a big responsibility, you know. We are allowed to have this license by right. the town, by right. the licensing mm -hmm. board, and that's why there are so few because, you know, we are expected we're held at a level of um, what we need to do to, to keep the community safe and... Mm -hmm. Well, we value as a as a member of the community, right? And well, and the other and bit of irony we is, yeah. you know, we're we've been here for forty years. This is right. our fortieth anniversary this year, and it's yep. kind of been tainted by this. So yeah. I'm yeah. not happy I know with that know. as well. So um, we we do take it seriously. We um, I've given you a copy of the BAT uh, workbook that you know each each of the uh, employees kind of goes through. It's about a two-hour course. Tell me about this. ID Science is um, it's a tech, it's the top-of-the-line technology uh, for ID um, checking. It, yep. it, I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's, it's crazy these days, you know, what's out there for, for fake IDs. Oh, I can imagine. Um, but yep. this company, uh, is, they have the top of the line stuff. They have over 20 years. Can uh, you utilize this in your stores? We have each of the, we each, each store has one of those. Okay. And they're not cheap. So it's, I can imagine. Um, Big plus, investment. you know, there's a, there's a, a yearly fee to, you know, they update it all the time because there's so much, there's so many new mm. fake IDs out there. Right. Um, so these, these are the best that you can find. Um, okay. And so we have everything available for all of our clerks. It requires do, the clerk to. It requires the clerk to. Human interaction there. To ask. Right. And, you know, so we, again, have had many discussions. All we can do is, you know, my management team. Is keeping still. We, we have to just be on top of them all the time. Right. You know, we, we do have surveillance in the stores. Yeah. Um, you know, Jake has taken it upon himself to check more frequently. Watch the spot tapes. checks. Yeah. Um, we're it's also going to be implementing our own compliance checks uh, privately. Um, That's good to hear. We're, we've racked our brains. Yeah. You know, we, we thought, you know, falsely, we thought we were, we were good. You know, we, we you try to you have a good been. job. Yeah, Absolutely. we try to run a good company, um, and we've our track record has, I think, proven it for the past 40 years, 30 of which I've been part mm -hmm. of it, um, which blows my mind. But yes. <laughs> um, anyway. Okay. We take full responsibility, and it will. We are doing everything in our power to make sure this does not happen again. That's all Thank I can you. say. I, I, I appreciate that. Do you have anything to add, Ryan, to that? <laughs> well, I, I've spoken to Stephen after <clears throat> uh, May 30th, uh, and he has also assured me um, that he's going to take every step to make sure that this does not happen again. Obviously, uh, you go, guys know my function inside yes. the police department. Yes. And, and, you know, one of my worries is, you know, one of my students yep. is able to right. purchase alcohol and then right. obviously a lot of things can happen. Yep. So that is one of my fears. So that's why uh, I go out and do compliance checks. Uh, yep. Not only in Deerfield, but Sunderland with cooperation with with the chief there yep. lately, right. um, with cooperation of the chief there in, in Hatfield also. Yeah. Um, and so. our Sunderland store did pass, by the way. <laughs> good. <laughs> <I wasn't laughs> right. Right. It, no yes, it did. Yes, yes. They, good. they did a good job. So, yep. um, uh, you know, I, 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 yeah, it's it's not a pleasant 
yeah. situation to be right. in. And, but, well, you know, the way I interpret it is from what I've seen, well, of course, the frequent establishments occasionally, um, is the uh, proactive approach that you've taken. Yes. And it's not just a reactive because of something that happened. Right. Uh, you're trying to stay above the curve, which is very difficult, especially when it deals with alcohol and cigarettes. Mm -hmm. um, so um, that's important to us as a town. Yes. Uh, and, you know, because, uh, you know, we've seen what alcohol can do with young kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, you know, lose one. You know, fortunately and I, being on the police department and the rescue for a lot of years, you know, you, um, the unfortunate side of the, what we see, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, you as know. Da as it, Dave we, said, it's not, it's not, it's that you were proactive rather than mm -hmm. reactive. That well, I appreciate. proactive and, and it still happened and that's. Well, I it's, know, you, and we under, right understand that, you know. It. Unfortunately, when the unemployment rate is 3%, you're not always getting the cream of the crop for employees. So it's, we, you, you try to vet the best you can, but it doesn't always work. It doesn't, but that is, um, in our meetings, that is one of the points that was firmly made is, you know, we, we can't just put bodies in there to fill shifts. You know, that's not what we're here to do. We have a responsibility. Yep. We need to really vet properly. Mm -hmm. And we, we thought we were, but we, we could do better. So. Thank you. Okay, just reading out the rest of this. Give me a moment here. Uh, there was a question in the back. Yeah, just a comment. You know, every business runs different with employment agreements, but you have employment at will agreements that are written for either part time or full time. You can build in provisions that specifically highlight this type of behavior yes. as as cause yeah, for we, termination. We have that. And sometimes, Actually. right in the beginning, when you hire somebody, and that's highlighted as one of the bullets in the employment agreement. It just reinforces behavior right mm -hmm. from the get-go. Yep. So that, that's a suggestion. Yep. It's, a, it's a great suggestion, and, and we have done that. I um, saw that here. You know, it, the, the question is how do you press upon part-timers, essentially, well, everybody, but yep. the importance of this when maybe it's not so important to them. You know, I know. If they lose their job, Right, they're on to the next. They, it's not a yeah. it's not a career position. So either. it's 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 a challenge. It but, you know, we're we're addressing it. Yep. seriously. So thank you. Um, so uh, you know, obviously there was a violation that occurred. Um, um, we're not required to um, um, impose a penalty. Um, I mean, we have that opportunity to suspend the license, to revoke the license, to suspend it for a short time. Um, I, I personally don't think that that's the right um, decision here. Um, I mean, I'll leave it up to the board here, but um, I, know, I, know, I know you and I know that you care deeply about this and I know that you've been proactive and I've, you know, I've talked to the chief and I've, you know, obviously here today, here today see how seriously you take this. and. Um, um, so I, I don't, obviously if it happens again here in front of us, I've never seen you here before and I don't right. expect to see you again. And, right. Um, right. Uh, but I know you're, you know, you're at the whim of that person doing that. And I, I you know, whatever you can do to, you know, as, as you are to uh, enforce that in the staff that it, right. that it, you know, that you're not sitting here in front of, in front of us again, that'd be great. Um, so I'm, I'd take advice from the other board members well, as to I'm, what they would like to do. I mean, I've over saw the renewal of your license multiple times obviously so i and i feel like that you take this very seriously and it feels like you have taken proactive action as a result of the sting and um so i'm i'm perfectly fine with no no action other than the um coming today it was that's enough i understand totally so i uh, your embarrassment of coming before that, us yeah, is enough I feel. 
the only comment I have is um, I'm contemplating a small fine mm -hmm. that would be designated to uh, Officer Ravis to use for alcohol education at the high school. That would um, be, I'd be happy with that, yes. So that's, you know, that I agree with that. I was thinking the same uh, fine is fine, but I, I was thinking also how could you work with Brian? I'm sure you probably do on other instances, but whatever you could do to help him. That's a great um, idea. Getting, yeah. getting to, the, you know, reaching these kids. Cause sure. It's not easy. As yeah. you know, every day you're, you're, we're dealing with vaping issues. We're dealing, vaping is just really difficult and alcohol yeah. issues. Um, so any way you guys could collaborate um, if you have ideas to do that. But I, you know, it's up to you how you'd want to Rather than that. saying fine, let's, let's say that you are willing to work with Brian to do that. I, um, because I think fine means punishment, punishment mm -hmm. and there, also, yeah. you know, maybe, maybe we, we get more could, out of you than a hundred bucks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> if you could, yeah, if you could look, you know, meet with Brian and figure out ways that you could help the school. Yeah. I would be happy to work with Brian, that. sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd be Absolutely. very grateful for that. We can use and, as a you learning know, because, experience. You know, well, you do have two stores within the district, right. regional district, so the, uh, it could be beneficial, mm -hmm. you know, anything Absolutely. education that we can do. Um, mm -hmm. well, and as, you know, as unfortunately, you know, older generation, you know, there was no education on it. No. Right. Uh, and um, even Jake, when he was in school, when I remember, there was no education on it. Right. Uh, it's just. Uh, Maybe as your position on the um, package store um, advisory board there would you know, as a professional, maybe you could reach out and see what is available or what other communities are doing. That's what I was going to suggest next. Yeah. As I can now, I've got access to mm -hmm. you know building this program and, and right. improving upon it. So yeah, so we'd I'd love be to see happy that to work with Brian. Yeah. And that'd be great. I I would be happy just to sure yeah very say let you that. work together. Yeah, work that out, Brian. I'm sure yeah. you'll be in touch. That was a wonderful suggestion. Yeah, Dave. thank you. Yeah. Um, so, on those lines, I I'd make take a motion to close the hearing. I will make that motion. I'll second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any other questions from audience or any other participants? No. Thank well, you so much. For again, coming. thanks for coming. Well, I know thanks. it's not pleasant to be here. Well, we really appreciate I, you coming. I like to see everybody. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> on other circumstances, uh, on I'm these sure. Circumstances. So, I, well, I please, thank you. yeah, but please reach out to Brian. We can I, do that. Certainly to do will. that. Yeah. Trevor, it would yes. probably make sense if we just do put. It says to sort of just notify in writing of the conclusion that yep. we've reached. So I just think to say, you know, no, no penalties, but that we yes. um, recognize that you'll be working with the um, school resource officer to provide opportunities Perfect. for safe, yes. you know, purchasing. Or we'll, yes. we'll figure something out in the. And you'll be able to. Sense. Will you be able to put that in a in a writing format? Yes. I'm okay. Put that perfect. In writing and then Thank send you. that to him as his um, as yep. what the results of as the, the hearing. As the results of the hearing. Thank you. That's yep. perfect. Okay. Great. Thank you, Diane. Have a good Thank night. You. Good right. to see you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming in. Let's see. So. Um, so. We're a little late, Gary, but um, <laughs> licensing events and economic development questions. Um, Gary, uh, is it Boga? How do you pronounce your name? Come on up, Gary. <laughs> I know you as Gary. I don't know how to pronounce your last name. Well, thank you for knowing me as Gary. That's yes. <laughs> Pleasure um, to meet you. Good to meet you. This is. Um, uh, Pronounce your last name for me. Bogoff. Bogoff. So Gary Bogoff is the president and founder of Brookshire Brewing Company and is here to discuss uh, licensing, um, events, economic development questions. We, um, a year or so ago maybe, we had to uh, approve Gary for um, a farmer's pour. Correct. Um, and to be, you know, people sample the, your uh, product at, at the facility. And um, I understand you want to expand, and I know you've been doing some expansion or, and getting people to come to town, which is fantastic. And we'd love to kind of make sure you're in compliance with all that and, and how we can help you um, and help uh, all of us with economic development and answer any questions you have or help you through the process of 
getting proper licensing and all that. Well, we, we appreciate you recognizing the fact that we are finally bringing some people to town. Yes. Um, I'm more uh, pleased that we have a lot of local people that yes. are coming regularly. Uh, with the weather breaking, we, uh, I guess there's like three different issues. Yes. Um, yep. And I, I don't know which one you would prefer to start with. <clears throat> yeah, just tell us what you're working on, what you, what you hope to achieve. We can try and help you. So, okay. Um, so I, I guess the first uh, thing that we're looking for is to extend our operating hours. Okay. Uh, when we came before you the first time, um, we had no idea of what was going to happen. And uh, since we've opened, we've seen the trends of, of when people come and when people go. Uh, we've also seen people calling us up and asking us if they could have private events there, like a number of businesses, uh, Yankee Candle, Greenfield Savings, have basically rented the space to bring either their staff or their customers in to, for whatever reason, mm -hmm. appreciation or yep. um, just to have a party. Um, and we think that we've more or less pigeonholed ourselves into the the small time frame that we requested that you approved of originally yeah so um i don't know if you received my letter to the town uh, I have it here dated april second. 15th let me read it again Okay. Uh, we're not looking to be a pub. We're not looking to compete with uh, any of the local establishments. We just find that um, we, we were mistaken on, on a Friday and Saturday night. People would like to stay till 9 or so. Um, if there was a private event, if they chose to stay till 11, we feel uh, that that wouldn't be out of question. Um, in addition, you know, because people have asked us to come in on days other than Thursday through Sunday, so that's why we're requesting the seven day. Uh, also, it, this new uh, pouring license, which is really a relatively new thing to the craft industry uh, of Massachusetts, uh, I have two people who actually work for me and have gone on to open up their own breweries. Uh, one is in the town of Turner's, the other one is in the town of Milford, and when they issued them their licenses, they actually issued them the full uh, bar license from whatever time it is in the morning until 2 a.m., and, and we're not looking to, um, to see that, uh, but we, we would like to expand our hours a little bit more. So, um, again, some of this will need some help from council or others, um, would you need that license to operate that, that amount of time? No, 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 not at all. I'm just saying as an example of what is also happening throughout mm. the state, uh, these small little tap rooms with this particular pouring license, those towns have actually granted those people the full bar hour hmm. um, operation schedule so okay. uh, yep. we're, we're not looking for that I mean we and don't want to be open till 2 a.m. right I right. don't necessarily want to be open till 1130 but if somebody but if leaves at 10 we have a, an hour to clean up right and I just want to try to fit within the parameters of mm -hmm. and with the, what's expected with your current us. license you're only allowed to pour your own product right that's correct and and, and that's not changing yeah so it's what is yep. produced on premise You have the Greylock stuff there? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> produced up uh, in Sheffield. <laughs> um, Just a, Dave, you have the most experience with yeah. this. Do you have any questions? Um, you know, the, I have actually no concern with the expansion of the hours, um, as long as it's... Um, 
it's reasonable, you know, um, it's and to basically expand your business. Um, it's, um, I'm not aware of any complaints from neighbors or anything well, that to was, this point. That was my question. Um, as you have entertainment and stuff like that, it is kind of in a neighborhood with some houses there. So I'm trying to figure out, um, do we need a hearing for that? Is the, um, the planning board need a uh, change of use for the building? Is there? I think what would be, when I talked to Gary originally about it, I just think what we don't really have an entertainment permit that we do, have done in the town per se. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it would be, um, you know, out of respect for the neighborhood, it would be helpful to, for you to know, you know, right. what the type of entertainment w is. Yeah. I mean, he was talking about, I asked him if it was going to be amplified music or right. if we're just talking about acoustic music. Mm, yep. um, I think also the the room itself, the, the tap room is, is fairly small. Right. So I think that as far as the premise, I think you just have to consider that and how many people, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be attracting right. you know, to the to the premise. But the whole, the reason I gave you a copy of the premise, be, or the the license is because the brewery, um, the entire brewery right now is permitted, not just the tap room. Right. Um, not that that you know it, I, we talked. I mean, it's not like there's alcohol being served all over the place. Right. No, but it's a place I just of work. wanted to point that out. They got those real big the, kegs out back. Yeah, the gigantic. <laughs> for the and I don't know if you do those. tours or yeah. I don't know how that works, but. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's that was the only th the concern about the about the entertainment, just at the, mm. sort of the level of what it would be. If it's just calm, you know, some some trivia and things like that. You know. Right. But, but I, I did I, I did I do some research. Say, I don't think that we do. I mean, I we don't actually we don't permit have comedy and trivia. Correct. And, no, yeah. that's not no, no. something. Well, you enter you no you do you enter train you do the mass general law um, allows you to you have really? to give entertainment licenses. It depends on what the entertainment is though. There's a Sunday entertainment license for jukeboxes and and if you're going to do performances basically if you're going to mm -hmm. have a comedy show or if you're going to have a musical performance mm -hmm. you do have to give an entertainment license per mass general law yeah. and you have to give a Sunday entertainment license if it's going to be on Sundays. Right. So we do mm -hmm. need to know that. So, so those things, and then I think as far as the, um, uh, uh, what was the other thing I was We don't say? ever. Yeah, I, think outdoor, I don't remember ever stuff, issuing. Right? I, mean, I don't ever. I don't remember ever issuing one for that. For entertainment, mm -hmm. I don't think you have. I don't, I don't yeah. think we have one in the town. Ooh, no. That's what I'm saying. You might have done it for yeah. like a specific event, yeah. like but a, I don't well, think you've done it kind of as yeah. a sort of seasonal thing right. or as a as an ongoing. Do we, thing. Mm -hmm. So what is it? What does the permit look like? We don't have, like we right. didn't, like when no. he came to ask me about one, we didn't even have an application okay. for one. Right. So I was having a hard time really, I looked Figuring at other out. towns, like Amherst has one, other communities have one, and they basically ask you, you know, to describe what the events are going to be and when you're going to have and them and, more you know. What I want to kind of get from you is where do you see this going? I mean, obviously you had a few months, you kind of kind of saw, oh, okay, well, this is what's happening. So maybe we want to uh, uh, revise I've, yeah, this. You know, there's a lot of talented people in the Valley. Yeah. Um, I've had people say, hey, would it be okay if uh, me and my friends come in and do some bluegrass yeah. Or, yeah. or whatever. Um, That's really cool. The, the third thing is, is the outdoor garden. And, and in right. the past we've, uh, done Western Mass Beer Week and we yep. used the, our, our dock as a stage and right. you know we had people in for the day and had a little bit of music set up I mean it, I did this because I wanted to be on the right side Me too. of yes you know and, and I, I want to I'm develop not, yeah, economic development here exactly. I want to see me more people come I'd love to see this expand and you I'd love to see you do an you know an addition yeah. in a you know I'm, I'm more excited probably than you are about your expansion but um, I just you know, I, I want to make sure it's legal and it's right. And you're, you know, if you're serving outside in a parking lot, how do we coordinate that off? You, I would think you would have to get um, a different approval from the ABB. Uh, AB, I don't know how you say ABCC. that. Well, ABB this is to, something to that I learned about today. Exactly. And, so and let's once again, whatever I mean, you need. Exactly. We're, we're, we're not pushing yeah. the envelope here. We want to put a stamp on it and yes, mail it. That's perfect. So yep. uh, so that's the idea is to figure out what's needed and. We can help with I, that. I, if I recall, and I might be wrong, but I thought we issued your permit for use for upstairs of that building. You did. Yeah, that's did. still it's the whole building registered. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So yeah, I, I mean the town has at at one point um, approved a, a full establishment. I mean, yes. That, that wasn't just the when you were going to do an expansion kind of thing. Right. Yeah. We, we yeah. had looked. The second floor of the building would 
lend itself to a I full see. restaurant. Wow. If, uh, When's that coming? <laughs> yeah. So I guess I just want to say in terms goes, of, so, so in terms of, you know, some of your questions yes. about the expansion, I guess, so Gary did mention some of the other um, tap rooms, and I did go and look at some of the ones he actually mentioned, right. and they, they, a few of them did have expanded hours, but most of them still did have, you know, Thursday through Sunday, and they were mm -hmm. limited. Um, there were a lot of folks that were doing entertainment, um, as he said, though, and during right. those times, and there were folks that were serving, you know, allowing food to be brought in and serving food. Yeah. I think one of the big distinctions between the tap room being more, um, as Gary said, it's a new thing, and it was more intended to be kind of a tasting, sampling, pouring situation. Right. An on-premise requires an, a common victualler, so it requires you to have a food available for people if they're going to be drinking, um, those kinds of things. So there are a little bit different requirements. It, it requires annually an on-premise has to be inspected by the fire chief and right. the building commissioner to ensure mm -hmm. um, it meets the safety requirements um, since the Rhode Island fire. That's right. a new thing that happened in the last decade. Yep. That doesn't isn't required of a poor room, of tap right. room. So there would be things that if he expands the business, ideally, if We'd he went to the on done. premise, then it, you then would it be. Cover all that. It would cover all that. It would cover the safety of the of the folks. It would cover Gary's liability and the town, mm -hmm. and also it would expand you know, uh, the operations. Believe me, safety <laughs> is not a point of contention. Mm, of uh, but Diana doesn't understand the complexity of the brewing license in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, when we started, we had a farmer brewer's license, which is what this license was named after. Oh, okay. And, and, and that license had a certain set of restrictions when it came to distribution. Mm -hmm. And we chose self-distribution. And when we got to a certain point, we could no longer use the umbrella of the farmer brewer's license because we were selling too much beer. Outside. So we had to give up our farmer brewer's license and we had to get a manufacturing license right. and a wholesaler's license. Okay. And when we got those new licenses, that precluded us from selling beer to the public. Right. Two years ago, Governor Baker passed an amendment to the farmer brewer pouring license, which allowed the two breweries in the state that are manufacturing breweries to also be able to sell beer on premise. Okay. But we, can, we cannot sell beer to the public to go, which right. is what right. the um, true farmer right. brewer license Was. allows. Oh, it does. Right. That, right. that so farmers, you could buy a pint or yes. several you could buy pints a pint, and take you it home. You could buy a growler yeah. or a six-pack to go. Yeah. Yes. So well, that the, explains why. That, um, that does explain you, The transition. Because I remember you used to be able to buy. I like right. the raspberry one. So, <laughs> so then, uh, well, we're good that friends with strong. Steve, and he <laughs> we support him. Um, he supports us. Yes. But uh, so it, it's not quite like you can come and get a taste and get something to go. You can come and you can consume a beer on premise, yeah. right. but that, that's where right. our license stops. Right. right. Uh, with the food side of it, we are allowed to serve food that's prepackaged, but we're not allowed to prepare food. Correct. And You'd need a kitchen and all right. that. So yeah. we're, we're really helping to support the, the restaurant business in town. Because right. a lot of people come and they, they're looking for stuff they, they can bring. And they'll come right. over and yeah. have, a, have a dinner somewhere. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm in favor of, of um, per permitting the additional hours and also um, Seeing how the entertainment, I mean, we don't even have an application. You, you did ask this back in April. This is now June, so it's been months. So I'm, you know, and the kind of thing that you're talking about here, comedy, trivia, you know, potentially bingo. I, I mean, why don't you do it um, and see how, what you need. In the meantime, we can work on an application and, um, we can have some input. Maybe, Dave, you can check and see what things should be on the application. Well, he, you, we he have a is already applying, right, to AB. Well, that's a different note. Right? Well, we, I think she's talking third, about the events. The right. Item on the events. right. Yes. She's talking about for the events. So I think we, what we can do is we have, uh, Pat and I had gotten a couple draft um, 
uh, application. application. So we can we can um, you know put something together if For you're comfortable yeah. allowing him to go ahead. I don't know if you have a. Um, maybe he could give us a schedule yeah, for the next just couple what you're months. Planning. Just maybe so, uh, just a uh, uh, anything page specific. of what you're thinking you might have coming up on the calendar and right. Or what and you'd then like we can to then you can to. come back in and we can talk about how to. Well, uh, I mean, we are we in, like, in the process you. of developing. So, I mean, one thing I can say is that I'm finding this place to be very family orientated, and people are, are bringing their kids, and you know, we've got root beer floats so that they can hang out with their parents and have a beer. And uh, you know, it, it's it's okay. really been very laid back. I mean, we're doing cornhole, you know, which would be part of the entertainment. You know, we want to put in a couple horseshoe pits at some point. And uh, so, part of my concern is like, kids, uh, like I know you can't be, have kids in a bar. Yeah, you so, can. You can. You can. Yeah, yeah you can. I'm in Massachusetts. As long as they serve food, you can have them sitting at the bar. But they don't serve food, right? No, no we, we do they, have food. Oh, prepackaged food. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. I just want to get my head around it to make yep. sure you're doing no, things I, correctly. I and I know you, I, I yeah, hear yeah. from you that you're wanting to do things correctly. Yep. So, um, one sec, Rocky. Um, so, if, if um, you're going to look at the applications for, for this, Process for the event for the event. Yes, get that yep. together. Yep. Um, we have to decide on the hours, and then the last item on the agenda was the, the last item is with the weather um, being nice. Finally, mm -hmm. the flood not being here every right. day. Every day. Uh, Coming we, tomorrow, we developed a small outdoor beer garden, uh, and I, I went to the building inspector. Before we did any of this, I went to the building inspector. We have put in handicap accessible uh, facilities, and, and when it came to moving outside, I went and uh, had a conversation to find out what do I need to do in order to make this right. Um, evidently, there's a lot more to do than anybody here knew about, right. uh, and now we're aware that I need to reapply to the ABCC for an alteration to the premise um, and you know okay. draft out a and, and then but first come to the the local board mm -hmm. for your approval prior to I believe you end up sending right. the it's application the same as the original in application. right yeah. Yeah. okay so you know once, once again the application is like this and yeah. they want to know my firstborn my DNA yeah um, all of that which is not a problem I've done it a million times already but yeah. uh, that would be my next step would be to if I don't want to waste my time if if the town doesn't want to allow us mm -hmm. then you know i'd like to know that i, I have I, your support i think i would like mm -hmm. i would like to allow it i want to just make sure as you do that it's all uh, licensed accordingly and you know it's respectful of the neighbors and it's you know it brings economic development that kind of thing so yep. just to make sure we're, we're on board with it and we get you you know what you need to roll through or if your lawyer needs to talk with anything you know if he has questions on what you know what's required um so Dino will work on the permits. I so, think so do you need a vote from us to move forward on your application? I think, I he, think, I think he doesn't need a vote no. for the application, but he would need a vote on the extended hours. If you're going to change the hours, you need right. to vote on that now, because that is the local licensing. Um, that's at your discretion. You don't Correct. have to go to ABCC yep. for that. Yep. And then I would ask that you just be, um, you know, just that we have some understanding of what the events is going to look like until right. we get the application done so that he's not held up by that, but mm -hmm. he knows what he needs to tell you to for you to feel comfortable with. But, but I thought account? you just said that you had to have the application. You had to have us okay it before you could put the application no, in. He that, that, no, that is correct. That's the process. Okay. So I go before yeah. the local authority, and then it's an if you approve it, right. it's basically then you this send it application. to... And it's the only amendment he would put on here is right now because he doesn't have patio deck checked. He's, he has to check that. Mm -hmm. right. Oh, okay. And, and he has have to identify basically that area. Just, so will there need, yeah. there'll need to be a separate hearing? 
Yes, okay. it's just like so a liquor license that. application. Okay. It's, a, it's exactly the same as when you did it initially. So it's a, 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 he'll do a application online. He'll, he'll have a form that we'll, he'll give us a copy of. We'll, do, we'll work with him to make sure we get the a butters notified and whatever yeah, has to happen. Public, and public, public hearing. hearing. And then he comes in and then we mm -hmm. do that form. We, like um, David says, we check the alteration. He needs to show the licensing authority what the area is going to mm -hmm. be. You need to know that it's secure, that right. underage drinkers or can't, you know, just wander right. in or whatever. And yeah. that's what he would have to show for the, um, right. the area, sure, sure. basically. Yeah. And then do you think you need those extended hours before that process? Or you're looking to do it with that process? Or um, I, I I, I, we could use the hours now. Sooner, yeah. Than, yeah. sooner yeah. than that. Yes. OK. Well, I, which, I which mean, we can I, approve. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, we can. I don't have any problem with that, it, um, and I've been over to see your um, area, so, and I think you went over, right, Dave? Yes. So, I mean, I don't have any, um, other than just being properly, you know, designated off, I, I don't really have any issues either, so. So you'll continue with the same kind of operation that you have now until you get approval, correct, and you don't have any? Well, to, to make it legal, Correct. Um, we would like to request some one-day permits so okay. that um, the town we can go is through aware this process. Of, yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Well, then I for events you have maybe coming up. I would make. Well, we, we've hired people. That, yep. So uh, right. Yeah, that's the kind of working. thing. If you yeah. let us know what you're doing, yeah. that'll that'd be helpful. Okay. Okay. You can't do one day. You can't do so, one day so with people that already have licenses. Oh, you can't. It's great. prohibited. Not allowed. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, we'll figure. We'll yeah. figure something out here then. Okay. We're the enforcement agency. Yep, that's correct. Sure. We're the enforcement agency. Okay. Gotcha. So, do you need a, a motion on the hours? Yes, I, I will make the motion to extend the hours. Um, I, don't, I don't have any problem with the extension requests for seven days. So um, now the hours are Monday through Thursday, 12 to 8, Friday, 12 to 9, and Saturday, 12 to 7. We'll and you, the motion them. is to extend them to seven days a week from 11 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. Yeah. Or that was the request, I assume. I'll second that. making the motion. Any other discussion? No? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, and so just backing up, what are we doing for the entertainment? We're just so, gonna try to get yeah, so Gary, can you and I just work on like the next month or so, whatever you've got planned, we can just get something to them and just let them know. I think if we just let like the, the chief, you know, just let yes. people know, we'll like make, just make let, sure the let yeah. the police yeah. know what's, that, what's going on and we'll let the board know until we get an application together and get yeah. something. And, and, so, and so what's the process then for the alteration? You're going to work on I that? send him the link. So yeah. he has that. He's he knows what he's got to do. He's going to get that thing filled out and get his blood on there and then he's going to yep. send me DNA. the <laughs> okay get his so, so, so you feel sign it in blood. so you feel satisfied that you're okay you feel okay with what what's happening right now i mean yeah, you got I, an idea i just want to make sure that i go through the process in the thank right you. order thank you yeah. oh no yeah. I, I know well i just want you to make sure you feel comfortable that because this has been a sort of disconnected conversation, so well, I just want to make items, sure. Yeah. But I think the main, the yeah. main issue is the hours, which we've had settled for him. The entertainment, Depends. which he's going to, uh, yep. Diane gonna and deal. Gary yep. are going to work on to get us that information. You just need to let us know yep. at the so we this can point, that. and then we can do the application. And then application. he's okay. doing the application. Yeah. Well, uh, Did you want to talk about the other thing the, that yet. you had economic development? Okay, yeah. you already asked those questions for economic development. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. All right. Rocky? If I may say something. Gary doesn't know me at all. Um, I have a brother that teaches at UMass. His name is Will Foley. And uh, he's been teaching beverage management for 18 years at uh, UMass. And he takes his students. Uh, they all have to be over 21. They all have to be TIP certified and everything like that. And he brings them to Gary's. And he does a tour with them every single year, actually every semester. And my brother says that his establishment is one of the best run uh, places that he takes his students oh, to. Oh, that's really nice to and hear. And he's been doing, and he's been teaching for 18 years, but he's been in beverage management for 40. Wow! So wow! That's, really that's quite of an endorsement. Nice 
Yeah, yeah. He does know me, know me from a hole in the wall. <laughs> well, Will's a great guy. He yeah. really is. Huh? Well, um, okay. I, uh, Gary, you've been always so wonderful yeah, to us as a town and so um, and willing to work with us always. Um, so um, I well, appreciate we, you coming in and trying to straighten us out. Yeah. We'd, so. yeah, we'd love to see um, you know, some expansion sometime down the road, okay. uh, one, one step at a time. Um, but yeah, if, you, if you're available at some point, I'd love to come in and say hi and you oh, know, take absolutely. a tour. I've never been, never been over, so we'll talk about some other issues. So. He's, he's got Czech Pilsner now, so I can go visit. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't do me any good, but. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. You know, granted, I wasn't on the board, but I'd like to apologize that, you know, we received this on the 22nd of April, and, and this is the first hearing. Oh, I'm a patient man. <laughs> I know how long things take. Yeah, I do. Good things I'm take. I'm not time, overly patient so myself <laughs> sometimes. So. so, okay. Thank you, Gary. Oh, thank you, Gary. Appreciate that. I'll be in touch. Okay. Thank okay. You. Thank you very much. Yep. Have okay. a good night. Gary, Thanks we'll for coming redo, in. Um, we'll actually redo the license with the new hours and we'll get you a copy for your wall. Okay. 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 Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Gary. There, um, before we moved on, um, I wanted to take a quick Unless MA, anybody, right. yeah, I wanted because you, if you're not want to hang out all night, do you, you had a public, public comment. comment? You wanted to say something? <laughs> Great. And meeting with the committee that's working on that. I don't know whether it's still at the confidential place, so we'd have to go into executive session, or whether it can be a public meeting. Um, like but it would, I think it's time to update it. There's some real urgency right now and some real issues um, okay. that because of the federal credit running out in December, or end of December, um, and the fact that we probably have almost six months of licensing, it could be up to six months of licensing and permitting that needs to happen before we can get in line. and. Last time, as you well know, the SMART program filled up in one day, eight blocks. They're thinking that now the blocks, or if they're already filled up and they're, if they start up something new, but we don't know what the state's doing. We've been waiting since January. They still haven't done anything. And I just think there's some real urgency for us to make a decision. It's also pretty, financially varied and I don't personally feel comfortable making a recommendation as a volunteer when there can be so much money possibly left on the table or by delaying we end up eliminating any choice or we have to start all over again. So um, can I just say that I am so confused. We you really, be. really want solar on the landfill. And I, I don't understand why we always get to a certain point and then it like There's falls no apart, or we get we no money. Or, or we get we <laughs> well, get well, this, time, this time it's DOER. Yeah. They're, they're yeah, the yeah, primary yeah. problem. They still have not come out with any new regs, so the, we can't. And and because we're a town, we have to go through the you know. And we started this a year ago. You know. I know, I know, but we started this multiple time. times. <laughs> this has been. Time. I mean, Dave was here last time. When before we you had this. MA, it was before you had gray hair that we started. Doing it was before this. I had gray hair. <laughs> And it's probably of because of this, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, I think our next meeting, uh, is it the seven, 17th, or would there want to be a different meeting we'd have? This? Is it an executive session meeting? I have to double check on that, because okay. as I may yeah, alluded to, I'm not council. quite sure yet. Because council has been involved, because we've had several procurement I mean, questions. I mean, I prefer to be public, because right. I think the more people know about this, yeah. and the process, and what's on the table, and, yeah. and you know, the I better, be the better off. we but, could do an update. I but I don't know. Yeah. And I just, I definitely, you know, I mean, I, the, David and I have talked, and we'd really like to meet with you and just give you an update as yep. to what's happening, explain what's going on, so and I, maybe we can move this full, figure out so, a way of moving it forward. Yeah, because, you know, they're actually a lot more enthusiastic now about using brown fields instead of green fields. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Right. Oh, because there's, there's definitely it's a benefit no sense for that. that you would turn on um, a regular field that's right. productive Instead when you know, when it's, you have a brown field, literally a brown field that you can cover. Right. The, the landfill is 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 I they're do. really encouraging, and they and 
It's not that, Emma, you know that, that we've always wanted to do it. I know. Me too. Well, once we get some money from the state, right? So, yeah, so or let's put that in. So is that the seven I'm just worried that if we wait for the state, if we, if we try and hold out until the state comes up with some regs, we may either have to start all over or or not have a choice. All right, so, so we'll talk so, about that. On so this. And, and there's good. The other thing is. is yeah, well, there's, when's the next meeting? Oh, I mean, the we're, we're in the 19th. We're the 10th. Are we going to meet the 10th? I think he's working the 10th. Are well, you working the 10th? Then? Yeah. He is. Because we're, we're, our He's next meeting was going to be the third, but we're not to, meeting to that we meet week. meet the ninth? The day, Tuesday? Uh, uh, sh sure. Uh, we could meet the ninth. I have July 9th listed on July 9th. What? I don't have my, on my calendar. Oh, actually, you know what? 9th. I won't be here that well, whole week, so it doesn't matter for to me. So it'll be a quiet me, meeting? It'll be a super quiet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so do you want to do the ninth? That's fine. I'll do the ninth. And are we doing five and or I six? Can, it's Tuesday the ninth. Tuesday the ninth. Okay. No. Awesome. Yeah. Tuesday the ninth I can do. At what oh. time? Six o'clock? Yeah. Okay. I don't know how I missed uh, tonight at 5.30. I'm sorry. I sent you an email and you responded back and said yes. Thank you. <laughs> you responded and said okay. Oh, no. But for the agenda. You asked yeah. to okay the agenda. But I yeah, didn't but no, see I put new meeting date. time right in the subject line and you wrote yeah. okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it's usually <laughs> six. So it's... So you're Tuesday the 9th. Tuesday the 9th. If it's available for other people, or is there something else that doesn't work for you on that night, or do you? Well, what, what's good for you? No, I think I think I can make it work. Um, yeah, you sure? Okay. I mean, we can pick another night if we've got something Yeah, but going it's going to get later and later. It always does. Well, that was why we didn't want to wait till the next. I mean, week. unless you want to do it earlier than that. I'm going to be gone. I'm going down to the Cape that week at some point. And oh. I see. Well, let's see. Um, I'm done with the the week before. Yeah, David's, yeah, David's the week the before. That's why we're not meeting the July 3rd is because he's gone that week. And next week, too, right, David? Yeah, two weeks. The week David. before that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so My wife has told me I have to we're vacation. We're looking at the ninth, <laughs> unless there's... Um, <laughs> Sunday afternoon. And at you, no, you don't argue with nope. the redhead. No, nope, it's my one day. <laughs> um, yeah, so... Okay, right, well, the ninth it is. July let's, 9th? Let's, okay. let's do it and... and See what you know, happens. Uh, yep. Yeah. Even if I'm not here, other members of the committee will be here. Mm -hmm. and, okay. You know. So. Yeah. And if it right. if if everyone's gone, we can try it the following week. But yeah. sooner the better. Yep. Up. Right. Cool. And I'll just let I'll just let David and Steve Stephen know. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Did you, want, did you, worry, did you have something else, Emma? I'm sorry? Did you have anything else you wanted to? No, that's no, my other question. Oh, was just, okay, good. I got Perfect. to get asked. Yep. Those are both okay. my issues. I'm going to go home and have dinner. Thank you. All right. No Thank electric you. charging station questions. Okay. There is a, I'd love to talk about electric charging stations, but not tonight. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, okay. So, um, we've hit that, hit that, hit that. So, we never did our, meet, our minutes. Do you want to hit that before we forget them? Yep. Okay. So I read these. I was good with this. I'll I make a motion to approve them as presented. Here in any seconds. Please. We can wait a bit if you want. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, those are done. Thank you. Three zero. Um, so, okay, so discussion items. Um, unless you, do you want to do your seats thing well, first? Well, just real you, quick, okay. um, I, I am not going to um, do a third five-year term on the um, Comprehensive Economic Development Strategy Committee, which is the um, county group um, that does the plan that w makes us eligible for federal money. Um, but I did want, um, us to make sure that we're paying attention. Somebody, we have two seats in South County, and can anybody be appointed? It can be anybody. It can be a general. Can, so if anybody is interested in the community, would love to serve on that. Interested in economic right. development in the county. Um, and be a then, great spot. and then um, the sounds like a job, the, good job for Paul. And it, it's a uh, um, <laughs> shaking his head. The twenty year, the twenty twenty plan is a new five year plan. We we just up finish updating. You're required to do the yearly plan or update the five-year plan every year, but then you do a new plan. And um, I just really want to encourage us to try to think of, um, I mean, it's, 
you know, it's just such general language. It's sustainable, natural resource-based economy, which is basically supporting our farmers. And what we need to do is have more specifics. And so I'm hoping that we can work something out. I talked to Natalie uh, Blazer, a representative, yesterday, and a couple other people down at the State House when I was waiting around to testify. And um, you know, they're, they're, we need to be included in part of the governor's plan if we're going to be part of the bond bill, economic development bond bill. So we need to have what we want in there. And Natalie's willing to, you know, pursue it for us. Great. So we need to have more definition and more requests so that we can get in the bond bill. And what that does is give us potential to have money available to us as a community. So, so again, it's a hustling a kind of thing. To to yeah, kind of we just, these. we need, to, we need to, to work on this. And I forwarded the seeds plan to Tim Hilchey so he could look Good. at it and think of some wordsmithing that we could actually stick into the governor's bond bill for you know, us to um, be, have, have some access to money. So okay. um, anyway, it's to encourage economic development, that kind of thing, and okay. um, however we foresee it. So we just need to define it, and that's really important. Okay. And then the other thing is. Um, Thank you for going <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it was an all day commitment, it but was. Um, it actually was very good to go. Um, there was, what you did. Well, um, the secretary of EEOA reached out to me and requested my testimony to support um, the Senate Bill 10. So I went to, um, um, to the Joint Committee on Revenue, which Joe Cumberford sits on, and so does and, and Adam Hines chairs. Wonderful. So it was wonderful because, you know, we had the kind of local people. And... Um, you know, so this was for climate adaptation and the supporting of regular funding for the MVP program, our Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. So I was part of a panel with um, the town administrator from Bedford and the mayor of Medford, and the three of us answered questions on different size communities, and I was the token Western Mass person. <laughs> um, but we were the, one of the first communities cer certified in the state, and we've you know, had been through four rounds. This will be the fourth round that we've just been funded. Um, and you know, so we're one of the most successful communities. So Thank I you feel, for all your work on that. That's I feel like we're, Diana, it's worth at least another you. half a mil to go down there. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Pays so, the tolls. So <laughs> we're going to. Or a quarter. You know, we're, <laughs> it's pretty other. exciting. We're high, you know, signing the contracts tonight. And, you know, we're, we'll, we're moving ahead on doing quite a lot of infrastructure. But it was clear that there was support. Um, I brought a map that shows all our critical crossings. And I said that, um, you know, each of these crossings were worth you know, between a hundred and three hundred thousand dollars a piece, and there's 19 of them that were considered critical. So, Great. Um, well, that's nice. It's on public record that we'll be asking for that money at least. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. They know it's coming. They know mm -hmm. it's coming. Well, thank you. Thank you. So we were successful. Okay. So on to discussion items. Um, uh, we have a one-day uh, wine and malt license for Holy Family Church on June 30th. Uh, this is their annual parish-wide picnic um, requested by Reverend Jonathan Reardon. Um, seeing the application and everything does look in order. I move that we approve the uh, one-day license. And I second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Um, Second item is review revised Deerfield 350th anniversary celebration logo. In addition, we added the 350th year. We discussed this a couple meetings back, and um, I was hoping for, well, so people didn't have to do the math that said 350 there somewhere. And the uh, person who did, designed it was really gracious to kind of put together a few ideas, and one of them, was, I thought, well, can we watermark a 350th? It didn't look good. So um, they came up with a really nice idea of just kind of putting, I don't know, do we I have, a, have it. one I here? Have um, one cause I have one because I don't know if it's on Facebook. So I didn't have like? access to it, it but I was hoping you could at least yeah, pull it up and show it. Yeah, let me just see if I can show it's it. It's going to be, yeah, it's probably on Facebook, right? Here for I the, think they were using it on Facebook, so. Oh, 
um, it was it was very simple. It was very simple to what what was there. Um, I know you can't zoom in on this, <laughs> so just just remember. So really, it just has the dates and just under oh. Deerfield, it has 350 years, 350 oh, years. So yeah, that's great. It's very simple. People oh, could yeah. the idea of this logo was to um, uh, make it easy, easily to easily adaptable to other things that people might be doing. Um, yeah. So very simple. It just has yeah. the uh, so it has Deerfield and uh, Deer is one text. Field is italics. There's a 1673 to 2023 will be our 350th year, and it just says 350 years under it. It's you know not really elaborate. We don't have our town seal on it. There's not. Yeah. It's just very it, simple. So it, it may can not. Be, the fundraising committee has said that it may not be the end all, but it's certainly right. the it's branding to start with. right now branding that they're to start using with. to get get yeah going. to get so going. It's so it's there may be perfect. other you know versions of this in the future, but well, I like it. It's very simple and yeah. the idea is that you can adapt it. Like if you were doing a 5K, you could do the sugar loaf and then have a mm -hmm. few runners underneath. There so another, no matter what your event was, you could tailor it to the, the event. And there was like. another super really cool I, um, version of this I saw that had really just two kind of curved lines above this, and it really depicted our two mountains. It had mm -hmm. sugar loaf and the other mountain kind of showing, mm -hmm. you know, behind this, and it really looked good. So yep. hopefully that'll be a version that we, we'd see out yep. there, but... I'm, I'm happy with where it's at right now, and yeah. any woman said, well, the comments next on it. We have to have Third Mountain to make if, everybody If happy. anyone is interested, <laughs> the so um, next <laughs> meeting is Monday the 24th at 9 a.m. Oh, okay, thank you. Monday the 24th. Um, so uh, we're just reviewing that. We don't really have to vote on anything there. No. Um, mm -hmm. See, uh, this we do want to sign, uh, which would be this uh, sign the South County EMS building uh, oh, lease. lease uh, it's a lease agreement for the uh, for 88 Greenfield Road for FY19 through FY23. Um, and this has kind of been hanging out for a while as um, the different select boards and members in the community kind of looked it over and um, had their council look at things. And I think council has changed a few things. I think in other towns they've looked at it small. Yeah. Really minor, minor, minor changes. It just... has been reviewed. It was reviewed by our council. It was taken to the BOO and approved. Um, it is a five-year agreement from July 1st of 2018 till June 30th of 2023. Um, and the KMP Law, who the town of Waitley and the town of Sunderland both have as their legal counsel, both yep. reviewed it, and we've incorporated those changes yep. in our councils, but we're, was fine with, with those changes. Okay, so we I can make go a, ahead and sign I make them. a motion that we sign this. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I just note that you are signing as the uh, select board as one of the uh, tenants, and you're also signing as the landlord for the Correct. town of Deerfield. Yep. Yep. So. Sounds good. Do you here's need? Here's the original. Yep. Well, I'm going to have one signature page co-signed for everybody. And okay. It's already been signed by Sunderland. Great. Uh, Waitley has their meeting on um, uh, next Wednesday, June 26th, and I'll be attending that to ensure that it's Get signed and then we're done. finally signed. Okay, good. And then we'll be sending a bill to EMS. Perfect. It's good. That building is beautiful. Um, there's a sewer abatement request for 36 Eastern Ave. I don't, I'm not yeah. sure what that is. Do you? Yes, that was actually, um, it was for a, um, a meter reading error. Okay. So we have the information in there. It's we'll a, a peek. you have an application for. Okay. Okay. Uh, overbuild. Yep. Um, okay. I make a motion that we um, abate the sewer meet. Um, it's, it looks like 312.55. Three, yeah, it yep. looks like yep. 312.55. Yep. Okay. Okay. I'll Let's second that. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Makes sense. They got an error. They got it fixed. We fixed that. Okay. Sounds good. Um, I'll fix this. We'll sign that. And then we'll sign this one. Do we have to we sign as the landlord too, right? Oh, down below. Yes. I'm sorry. Yep. No, that's all right. Yeah. I'll do that too. Okay. Okay. 
Oh. So next item on the list is the accept the designer selection procedures and vote to release the RFQ for the town buildings. Um, assume this is a town building assessment. What's happening? That goes there. So as I mentioned That's previously, on one of the, um, the uh, framework for doing the uh, RFQ for the, the ref request for qualifications for the town buildings assessment that we've discussed previously that the town buildings advisory committee has drafted. Um, they would like to do that in the context of the designer selection process, which means that once you have, um, if you've adopted that and gone through the RFQ um, in that format for procurement, it allows you to extend that engineering contract um, and still be in compliance with the law so that you could have those engineers continue to work on the project mm -hmm. without going if back we out found somebody. for yep. procurement, right, okay. for bid. So, yep. um, and you don't have to, but it does allow you to have that flexibility. I don't know if the town, um, this, so in order to use that process, you have to adopt these procedures. And a lot of times towns have done them. You know, I don't know if you did a building project. You might have already adopted them, but I didn't see them on the record. So might I well just asked council then... to provide a draft that you could adopt. And that's this. That's right this draft that you have Correct. here? Correct. Yes. Okay. I've, I've, um, she gave us a draft, and I basically just, you know, put in the information. For okay. The town. So. I guess I would take a, um, a motion for the uh, accepting the designer selection procedures provided by our council. I'll second it. Um, okay. Any further discussion? No. I, I'm sorry, I didn't review that, but it seems like it would be. Council has. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. a boilerplate kind of thing. It is for a this. boilerplate yeah. thing. It's just, yeah. okay. It just identifies the process that we're going to use, basically. Yep. Okay. Um, so I'm okay with it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, and then um, and then vote to release the RFQ that they all worked on to. Uh, I didn't give you another copy of it. It hasn't okay. changed since the last, last draft meeting. I gave you. Yeah. So I have to still coordinate with Whatever. Kevin just on the dates because I need him to perform the mandatory um, uh, building, you know, tour and things mm -hmm. like that. So I I just want to make sure you're okay with sending it out. I'll fill in the dates. I'll work with him and make sure. And then at your next meeting, I can you know give you updates on when the opening is and things like that. But it and has again, to be put in the central register and there's certain amounts of time that you have to you yep. know, advertise and those and, things. And then the other thing, um, and I think it was addressed by Bruce Hunter, was that they were aware of the separation of the funds per town meeting vote, mm -hmm. and they were going to spend some on one and some on the other. Just make our, right. I just want to make sure it's clear that when people ap apply to do this work, they understand that it's kind right. of separate funding. So, right. And I think they've got that handled, so that's yep. fine. Okay. So, um, so I'll take a motion to release the RFQ for town buildings assessment. Um, I'll take make that motion. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. And then um, we have a, uh, accept resignations. So. Do we have any resignations? Let's see. We have them. I've, I had put them. They have to go to the town I... clerk. Right. They don't. They yeah, don't they don't come here. Us. I don't think. No, I don't, I, I don't know why they've been, I don't know if they've come through the town clerk's office. I asked Pat if the town clerk had received them, but I think folks have been also either just copying us or um, I'll ensure that the town clerk gets them, but I just okay. wanted to make so sure guess, you had them. And ba well. based on this, there are, there are needs. Um, if anyone would like to serve on the personnel board, um, we have, um, I know one person is interested, came to the meeting the other night, and... Um, if anyone would love to serve your community, we'd really love to have you um, serve on the personnel board. Um, if you have any HR, you know, experience would be very helpful. Um, so the board, you know, overlooks our employment and uh, takes takes care of our employees and um, looks out to the, for the for the well-being of our employees and, and positioning and grading and hiring all that kind of stuff. So um, we'd love to have you serve. Um. Could we make sure we notify the town moderator? Oh, because she's the one who's supposed to make the appointments, technically, I think, to the personal no, board. No, select board does. Oh, select and then board there's does? one from the finance committee. Right. That, okay. that gets I on. thought yep. he had to do some, too. He does uh, some, but not personal board. But he does yeah. some. There's in the vacancy list. Oh, yes, there's um, a lot of other vacancies. We have, yep. Yeah, we yep. have a vacancy list, and he does do some of those appointments. Yeah. Yep. Um, 
Okay, so in, 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 are there any other annual appointments that you wanted done today? Well, so what Pat did is she did a master list, and so we you can see That's we have some vacancies. Yep. She did identify ones that I, I we believe are ready to be done. Um, I mean, I would leave that up to you, but we, um, we have, I think, secured... Um, you know, she knows that these folks have agreed to continue. I think um, that's and how the I title understand and it. conditions are the ones we've already appointed. The ones you've already appointed okay. are marked as as appointed on June fifth because yep. that's when we did the appointment. So the ones for tonight, she has marked as Wednesday, June nineteenth. Um, I see. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So. Um, as I look at just an example, the Ar uh, Agricultural Commission, I, I see one who's ready, but she hasn't confirmed with the others yet. Is that the That's idea? That's what I assume. Okay, so Correct. I'll point one yes. and then. Okay, unless anyone else wants to run with this. Do you... mm -mm. That's quite no. Okay, so um, I uh, make a motion to appoint to the ADA coordinator, uh, Kevin Scarborough. Um, and I'll read all these off and then we'll voted all at once. Um, agri uh, the Agricultural Commission, Thomas G. Clark. Um, Board of Health Agents would be Richard J. Kalaszewski. Um, Charles Konecki, which would be our special health agent. Um, Kevin Scarborough, Zachary Smith, and David Zamoyski. We should also add um, Gina uh, McNeely. Okay. She just retired as director of the Montague. Um, uh, director of Health at um, at Montague, and she's so she could fill in. Do we time. need to talk with her first? Oh, we already have. Oh, you have. Okay. Yep. And yep. Valerie Bird, who is um, the new health director in the town of Greenfield. Do we have enough room for them? Um, How many people just, serve on these, or is they, these are just at large, and they can come and, and this is help a, out in town? This is so they have authority to come in. If say and we have an we have emergency, a, right? They have we the have ability, need. right? Okay, so you have... Um, and this is why they, we do Zave Samoyski and right. Zach as well. Because, they're, yeah, yep. they're powered. So, so it's adding Gina McNeely okay. and Valerie Bird. Valerie. Both of them have been um, appointed in the past. Okay, great. Perfect. So it's just that Gina was health director in Montague. She's now retired, so there's no title. And Valerie Bird was um, health um, director of the Foothills. Okay. But now she's health director in Greenfield. Okay. So um, burial agent would be Barbara Hancock. Um, so conservation commission, we, uh, we have uh, Louis uh, Lu um, Masson, Jr. Oh, Louis Mission? Louis Mission, sorry. I was that name. Um, so is, is, did you talk to Louis? If it's Diana. highlighted, it mm -hmm. looks like yes. Oh, okay. Yep, yep. That's my understanding. So I have okay. not. I'm not highlighting any of these others yet. Um, so, and then the cultural council. I have Candace Bradbury Carlin, uh, Jack Cavaco, um, Olivia Leone, uh, Reba Jean Shaw Pichette, co-chair. And um, we're waiting to fill out the rest, get confirmation of those. I think those are the only ones that are, she's confirmed all of those. Those, those have been confirmed, cultural. The council. others have been confirmed. Uh, no, the, those are the only ones up for reappointment. That have confirmed. Those are all confirmed. Okay. They're all up for reappointment. Those are the only reappointments up this year. Oh, and they've God, all I see what confirmed. you mean, 2019. Yep, Correct. okay, so everyone else is good. Um, cultural resource officer, David Driver. Um, Dedic, we have uh, Robert... J. Decker the third and Ralph Healy as secretary. Um, let's see, emergency management. We have Lori McComb, director. Um, John Pachurik Jr., assistant director, and Zachary Smith, assistant director. This is for emergency management. Uh, emergency 911 coordinator would be Darren Melnick and William Swayze. Um, Energy Resources Committee, we have uh, Lori uh, Busada, Irene Clancy, Stephen Iper, uh, Greg Franceschi. I think we need to check on that. Yeah, because he's, 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 he's moving he's out of moving, town. But he's moving back. He is moving back, correct. But so I just maybe, don't know when. Yes, yeah, exactly. so we'll check on that check. one. <laughs> uh, David B. Gilbert Keith, um, Jay Stryker, M.A. Swedland, and uh, Stephen Svoboda. Svoboda. Um, fence viewers is Albert Olmsted. He left. He's still on the fence on that. So he said. 
Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Forest Wardens, we have Kevin Scarborough, William J. Swayze, and Derek Melnick. Uh, Franklin County Solid Waste Management District Rep will be Irene Clancy and M.A. Swedland. Franklin County Transit Authority, uh, Select Board Designee is Robert Decker III. Um, we have, there's a vacancy on the Franklin County Council of Governments Rep. It's usually the chair of this board of selectmen. Oh, well now you tell me. <laughs> I need another board to serve on there. Um, FERCOG um, Electrical Aggregation Project was David, David Gilbert Keith and Stephen Iper. Um, gas and Plumbing Inspector would be Stephen B. Uh, Baranowski and Jason Wallace is the alternate. Um, I'm pretty sure the plumbing inspectors and the electrical inspectors get uh, appointed by the building commissioner. We don't do that. I'm pretty sure. Really? Yeah. No. Okay. Well, question mark there. Uh, historical Commission, I have uh, Bonita Conlin, Conlin, and uh, there's a vacancy, and then Henrietta Cocott, and let's see, and then there's another vacancy. The rest uh, have not confirmed yet. Uh, keeper of Cemetery Maps would be Kevin Scarborough. Keeper of the Town Clock would be Robert Willette. Um, local Census Director would be Barbara Hancock. Open Space Committee, uh, still active question mark. So um, this would be John Nur, Knur? I don't know how to spell that, Nur. Um, Corrine Dugas, Lynn Faith Rose, Alan Swedland. Yeah, and so, so the only, so as and you can see, there's a note that says you have three appointments and the moderator has two. Right. Um, I think it is going to be important this year that we sort out the Open Space Committee because the Open Space Committee is who gets appointed to the CPA Committee, and there have been some questions about okay. those um, appointments or those representatives because the Open Space Committee hasn't been very active. So well, I think yeah, I'm why just, don't we, we just open be, space, well, we haven't renewed the open space plan and also um, we haven't had any APR proposals right. for us before. So, so but why I don't think we, hold we had on a that? confusion last year about who was appointed by who and so I think it'd be good if we could just Why don't we just hold on that and sort that out? Yes, yeah. thank, okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. And then um, we have um, a personnel board, which would be Raloon Bialik, I think is the pronouncing of her name. Bialik. Um, Bialik. Yeah, Bialik. So Bialik. she came um, the other night and um, was happy to be there. So um, Deerfield Police Department crossing guards would be Diane Baronis and Henrietta Coca. We, are, we already did that. Already oh, we did yeah. these already. June yeah. 5th. Yep, sorry. 5th. Yep. And let's see. Recreation Committee. Recreation. Yep. will be Robert Eckerman, who's the chair. Uh, Beth Brown, uh, Jeff Galley, Charles Knight, Rodney Warnick. Rebecca Zoli and Eileen Skrbisky Benek. And then we have Register of Voters, be Joanne Carney, Barbara Hancock, uh, Patricia uh, Kroll, and uh, William Lino. And then representative to the Upper Pioneer, uh, Upper Pioneer Valley Veterans District um, was confirmed for Joanne Carney. Oh, thank you. And oh, we already voted her. We last did. Anyway. Yep. And then let's see, Surveyor of Lumber. Well, we Wood. should do the we should do the fiscal. I mean, the SCEMS board. Again, where where do you see that? Well, oh, right here. We have nobody there. Okay, so fiscal agent, we would, um, I would make a motion to appoint Carolyn Ness again. Um, and I'm fine with that. Um, and I also make a motion that we, um, um, Dave said he was interested in right. doing, filling one of the spots. Yep. So we still then, would have. Well, we have. Uh, oh, and Matt Russo. Yeah, Matt Russo. Yep. It, he's. Do we? We probably have to do him again. Even yes, though let's we did, do that. We because we just appointed him to fill in my spot, but he needs oh, to be appointed right. as so he, he for he the needs year. A year. Okay. Yep. So, so we do Matt have Russo. all three. Yes. Okay. I was thinking that Matt was already done. But and you're okay doing that again? Yes. Thank you so much. Um, so that's good. We've got that. Um, so, Surveyor of Lumber and Wood, which would be Kevin Scarborough. Uh, Superintendent of Public Works Operations is Kevin Scarborough. Swim Program Committee is Judith Bardwell um, and Bethany Foley. There's a vacancy on that Swim Program Committee, so if anyone would like to help out, um, want to do that. Uh, Tree Ward and Moss Superintendent would be Kevin, Kevin Scarborough. Uh, Town Clerk, Treasurer, and Collector, uh, Barbara Hancock. 
and town council is uh, Mead, Tollerman, and Costa LLC. Um, town Memorial Forest Committee is vacant with a big highlight. Um, let's see, Tritown Beach Commission would be Judy Bardwell and Bethany Foley. There's still a vacancy similar to the uh, swim program. Uh, veteran Grave Officer would be John Sizz. A wiring Inspector would be Wayne Shaw and Eric Henderson. Again, uh, an alternate, whether we appoint them or not, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure Dick does. All right. Um, workers' compensation, oh, we did this already, and then well, zone. But why don't we list them, and that way it's not. The workers' this. compensation? No, no, the wiring, wiring inspector. The wiring inspectors is yeah. Wayne Shaw and Eric Henderson. Yeah. Alternate, 72518. Um, let's see, and then Zoning Board of Appeals is Bernard Bernard Sadowski, and Robert Decker is the alternate. All right. So we have an opening, I believe. And Lori, yeah. And we had a request for an appointment, but I, I think Pat was going to. I guess the question is, do you want to check with your alternates to I, ask I them if they want to be wanna, okay? Yeah. Whether you want them to be fully appointed or so, maybe you want to wait on. I those. do. I want to hold on 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 the zoning board okay. for right now. All right. Yep. Well, I, my understanding is there's several several people that are interested. So. Yep. So let's look at that. Yeah. Okay. All That's right. an important board. So. Okay. Um, so take a motion to appoint those. And I make that motion. Second. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Moving right along. Uh, let's stay with the. Do I have more? More to go? No, nope, uh, I think that's it. I thought I was done. Well, it's what else we got? Um, Can we get some more? Is there more, Dave? At the end? For the uh, building commissioner. Oh, yes, that's the next thing on the appointment. Yes, oh, the building oh, commissioner. Oh, yeah. So, discussion first. <laughs> so, um, so you just made a motion for all those appointments you just yes. read? Yes. Okay. Yes, the ones that I read for right. that were listed on the 19th, yeah. except for the ones we had to hold on was Zoning Board, and I think there was a couple others we noted. Yeah, well, hold on Open Space Committee and yes. Zoning Board of Appeals. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Do you want, and we voted yes, right? Yes, we voted yes. Okay. Um, do you all want an update of our meeting with the personnel board? Yes. Okay, so um, Monday night we met with the personnel board because we were hoping to discuss this position and where we'd like to move forward. Um, this is what we found. Uh, we first discussed the need to, um, that we saw for reclassifying the job description and the position to a grade six. Um, we went through each, um, pull that up. We went through each section of the job description and each section of the classification study. Mm -hmm. And where, you know, uh, based on education, basic knowledge, experience, you know, all of these items going down through, how does that job fit on our cl classification? compensation plan, is it a grade five or is it a grade six? So what you do is you look at each item, accountability, judgment, supervision, you know, work, work environment, and, and based on um, the Don Jacobs Consulting, um, and which is a reiteration of a lot of different studies on how you kind of classify the skill of a, of a position and the needs of that position. There's, you know, grade one through six or one through four, and um, you decide, you know, based on accountability where this position, you see that position needing to be graded as a degree. So once that's done, you tally them all up. There's a point, a point that's given to each section. Um, and once you tally that up, you decide, um, you look at, at your, your grading schedule and depending on how, how many numbers that winds up, it's either a grade four, a grade five, a grade one, a grade six. Um, this was revised to a grade, after discussing it with them, the, the consensus from the group was that it um, comes out to 620 points, which is a grade six. Um, right now it's set up as a grade five. Um, so in doing that, they agree with the need to change it to a grade six. 
Um, and then so the next step they need is the job description to match that. Right. So it should have identical, you know, whatever we're asking for should be in that. And, um, and so each job description will say, so, you know, this level of work environment, this level of supervision, all of that. So once that's completed um, and updated, the board signs off on that, personnel board, and then, um, and then you hire somebody at that, at that amount. Um, where we're at right now is that we could choose to hire somebody at a grade five and um, see where they fall on the steps, or we can wait, get this done um, with a new uh, job description, advertise at that job description, be able to hire in at that, at that pay rate, um, and move on down the road on what, what we want to do. So what that does is put a hold on that a little bit. It's, the, it's kind of the right process to go, um, but that's kind of where we're at. So um, I'm going to tell you what I know, leave it up to you guys to decide where you want to go, but as far as I'm concerned, I think it's correct to regrade this as a grade six, and um, I think the position deserves that based on all of our discussions at the planning board. They agreed, I mean the personnel board, I keep doing that. Um, based on our discussions there, they felt these are the needs that we want to move forward. You know, so we have really a choice as a board. We could decide to move forward with a grade six position and take that department in a different place that it's been right now mm -hmm. and be able to pay accordingly and expect, you know, different outcomes. Um, or we can leave it as more just a, an inspectionary position as a grade five, which will fit a certain spot on our, on our pay grade, may not, you know, may, these are applications aside, depend, it doesn't really matter who's applying, but just those are the two choices we have right now to appoint or hire somebody at. And um, I would like to see us move in the grade six position. I think that, that I'd like sense. to see that department move in that way. Um, I think the needs are there. It's certainly what Dick is doing, and he understands that it kind of needs to move in that, you know, online permitting, all these kind of areas. Um, but, um, but it kind of puts us in a pickle because we had two applicants for the job at a grade six. That's what, I mean, grade five, that's what it was, a, you know, out for. So legally, um, if we're going to change it to a grade six, we just have to advertise that again. People can apply and we can hire. Um, we have more um, money to work with at that rate to hopefully get an applicant. Um, that's kind of where we're at, but I, you know, I, this process has dragged on frustratingly for our current building inspector, you know, our board, everybody's board. It's been very, you know, it's been a learning process for me. I learn more every week as I do this. You know, so uh, it, I don't sit here knowing everything for sure. And uh, each week I, I wind up with more information that I didn't have the week before and it points me in a different direction. And I, you know, we need to get somebody in that seat. I, Dick is working way harder than he had agreed to. And uh, I feel like we're at this position where we could really take a step forward but it takes a couple weeks to do that, or a week to do that. I, I don't know how long it takes to regrade that thing and then have the new board meet and sign off on that. I just wanted to do things correctly, and uh, but I, you know, I understand the frustration of others. So that's kind of what I know at the moment, um, and it's it's up to you all what you want to do. I don't know. Well, wow, it's been a long time. And, yes, it has. Um, I feel comfortable coming at a grade five, and then because the problem is with going to a grade six, waiting till we have to rewrite the job description. Mm -hmm. And we also, as you said, it's a learning process. You've learned a lot, mm -hmm. but we need to figure out what we really want. I mean, I want, would like a good job done of, of the grade six yes. job position. I don't want a rush job. Right. So I would, we have money from not 
having anyone in that position. We have money for right now, so I feel comfortable at grade five. You have a probationary period anyway, and so going forward with a grade five person for at least for the probationary period doesn't seem to be a problem. And then hopefully within a month or two, we, we could get this grade six. That person in that position would have to apply for that job. Yes, but we would have a valid, we would all agree or be able to have input into what we foresee the vision for that department as we upgrade that position description. So we would have. Well, it would match this. Right. But it's I mean, there. I think we all know that there is responsibility there, but I think we all should have a meeting to discuss with the person, you know, that is, that we hired, what we're thinking of as a job and, and have Dick there too to discuss what kind of stuff we're thinking of, you know, because the problem is we, we don't work in the field. And so what, you know, what's possible, you know, you, you keep saying online permitting, but I know it's much more um, involved than just switching on the online. You have, you to, have to buy the program. You have to buy the program. Yep. You, have to, you have to archive everything. Well, if and, you're going to do a grade have, six, that you need that person to run that system. Right, you need and you need that person to actually it. supervise that in that office. Correct. With people, and we are funding. That's the difference between a five and a six. Right, and we are actually going to hire somebody in that in that office, but you know we don't have a real job description for the. I mean, we want we. I know we envision a more person, uh, somebody that will handle some of the planning stuff. You mean the the uh, assistant so to the clerical? Building, that, yeah, that the clerical person will have be sort of more engaged, if you know what I mean, mm -hmm. and. Um, would have more hands-on with actually helping, but then the building inspector uh, commissioner would actually supervise those positions in there. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't want to be depressive, but I would not be optimistic that we would get a good job description within, you know, a month. I mean, we're talking at least a couple meetings, at least. So. Well, uh, and, the job and the description way, is not that far off from what we have. Well, it just needs to be matching what's here and what we listed out for opportunities know, because it doesn't matter. The, that's a couple of meetings at least, I think. Well, yeah. I mean, that's up, up to you. Because that's a visionary I, thing. We, we, we've got to talk about what, I mean, because we, we talk, you, we've been talking about economic development. There's got to be somebody that overlooks the planning part. And, I mean, there's been a lot of, different good ideas, but mm -hmm. nobody's written them down in paper. And I would like to see, and so you're not just doing the job description for the building inspector, you're doing the job description for the person we want to hire to work in that office. Because we have not, mm. we funded it, but we did not hire that person yet. And, and we don't have a job description for that person, other than our right, conversation. Right, we have the current job description at, at five, when my concern is I don't, know if we'll be able to hire somebody at a five that's my issue so my my worry well, we is, have plenty is of money trying to, a to up hire someone at 3125 wherever that file is on the scale which is what to 65 is what we had talked about but that doesn't get you a, a grade five is my issue it's just marrying those two things you can't um if you're hiring at a grade five it doesn't fall into what we're hoping to secure that person for so if we put them in at a you know at a grade six or advertise and get the person as a grade six we have a lot more ability to pay them or attract a, 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 you know somebody but it you know I, I, all, all I can do is lay out what I've learned yeah well and I leave it up to you guys to figure I out I just what don't you feel do. that we can do a couple more months on this. I don't That's think all. it's a couple months, but I think it needs to be done correctly. Well, the reality of it is that this thing's been bouncing around since at least March, if not before. Yep. Uh, we have a building commissioner right now that's basically he's not getting paid for most of the time that he's working. Yep, unfair. Um, and, you know, we have two candidates that 
have applied for that position. Um, we have one person that's willing to work for full time, and the other person says he's full time, but he's got a number of other jobs, so he can only be here part time. So, um, you know, it's. I think we should move and hire him as a grade five, and within the 90 day probationary period, come up with all the guidelines for the grade six, and have him have the applications for that. And, you know, if he cuts the mustard, he gets the job as a grade six. If he doesn't, mm -hmm. that's a risk that he has to take. Okay. Um, that's just my opinion, but I think, you know, we've got to do something. We can't keep on dragging it out. And obviously we have to have a build, building commissioner in place by the end of this month. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't give us much time. I, I just don't know how to correctly do that. So what, it, you know, I'll probably sit this one out until we figure out, you know, I'll let you guys, you know, roll with the system you want to do. But I, I, I don't know how to hire, I don't know if we can hire the guy at a, at a five. It's my, my worry. And then we lose him. I don't think we will lose the person if we hire him. Unless we choose not to hire him for the, you know, if the probationary period doesn't work out, or if he doesn't work out to be the kind of person when we want, when we right, go to, at, we have an opportunity to re-advertise the job mm -hmm. as a, a higher, you know, job. So I'm, I'm really not concerned with that. I'm just concerned that we're running, we're running up to the July 1st. Mm -hmm. We have to reappoint. And, and the only and, way we're going to know whether the person will accept it is if we make a decision on a person and make an offer. Mm -hmm. If they accept it, fine. If they don't, back to the drawing board. Back to the drawing board. But the unfortunate part about it is, you know, with the last go round, you only had two applications. Right. So maybe at a grade six, other people who didn't apply would apply. Hmm. That's the that's the key. You just well, don't know. So. Except that we're still limited by what we appropriated at town meeting. That's my thing. Yeah, but you can ask for a transfer as soon as you have free cash. I mean, by the time we get to fall, you know, we can ask for a transfer. They're regrading. That's, I'm not worried about getting the money in the long run. I mean, we'll have, we'll have enough money to cover that in the fall um, if that person is correct and, you know, in that position is what we want. So... Um, I mean, I, I don't mind hiring at a grade five. I just don't know how you fit them. I guess we'll have to have that discussion when we sit down and meet with them, what step he can fall in at. Yeah. But I I mean, uh, I the personnel that. committee already knows that, you know, w the market is our, we have to upgrade the job just because the market. We have to look at all of our positions, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that's just the way the market is. There's nothing you can do about it. Right. So, and you you went through the you know process as much as you could, and and I feel like I'm almost there. Yeah. But. but. Yeah. Any comments, Diane? No, just, <laughs> no. I think you that you summarized it. Okay. I think with all. Yeah. Well, then I'll just make a motion that we hire, we offer. Um, Do you have a comment? Yeah. Go ahead. I mean, this seems like a pretty critical hire. And it seems like there's a definition of both the upgraded commissioner um, position that has to be worked out, but also somebody else that's going to be hired into the office. So you're kind of at a critical moment on the whole team here. Yes. Yeah. I mean, all of us that have to hire people, hires are critical. You know, personnel decisions are critical. And I would work around the clock to define all the positions, upgraded, et cetera, in the full team, and try to go out there and get the best person in. I, I know that it's gone on for months, but I would put the effort into, um, into the upgrade and to maximize your candidacy and the startup of the team overall. Well, the problem is, just we're running out of time. 
um, and this is our last meeting before um, the everybody's the building authorities commissioner's authority expires so we ha have to get somebody on board tonight or we have to vote somebody that will have the possibility of being appointed before July 1st so I guess I would make the motion that we offer um, the 65,000 to the candidate who seemed to be willing to take the job for 65,000 and just try to figure out where on the scale at grade five that it fits. And that we work as much as fast as possible um, to um, come up with the position description for um, the clerical help that goes in that um, office. We, we have, I, I can't exactly remember how many hours, but there's two persons positions, whether it's a person and a half or two ha part-time persons. But we work on their job descriptions as um, planning personnel. So we, and that will entail us meeting. Um, obviously we can't meet with Dave going on vacation for a couple of weeks, but we need to meet and feel what our vision is for those clerical pos positions and then incorporate that into the grade six upgrade that that person will su be supervising and how much we're looking for um, um, as the contact person for economic development. I mean, because we had talked about that person being able to um, help us help businesses that are trying to come into town and answer questions like that. I mean, I think that's critical. So we have to define what kind of persons that we want to hire in that office as clerical persons. And I say clerical not as just processing paper, but you know, handling the planning part and support to our planning board, our zoning board, and a conservation commission. And I mean, we had talked about our assistant doing some of that but you know it just doesn't seem like we're moving forward on it anywhere we need mm -hmm. to we need to define those positions and the authorities of those positions so that you can justify the grade si grade 6 but also what's our vision for this grade 6 person we're we're talking about moving on in that department so well, at monday night you know we we built a vision based on this because it's not about the person it's just about the position and I think I think that seemed pretty good but yes you all need to get involved with that conversation and have more conversation there but, but um, and but we also need to work with our building inspector or building commissioner persons or anybody so they can help us define the job because we are, we're not it's just like defining the health agent job I know a little about the health agents jobs because I have the certifications. Mm -hmm. But if you hadn't gone out and done restaurant inspections, if you haven't gone out and done Title V inspections, you don't really know what that person does. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need their input because we, I, I know myself, I don't know what kind of things they're looking for on the inspections part and what in the zoning officer part. So that needs to be, where do we want, we need to hear what they actually do in the field so that we, as the direct supervisors, because they report to the select board, what, um, you know, what, what is our vision for that person to do? Mm -hmm. we, we need more def definitions in that job description before we actually post that grade six. Because mm -hmm. I, I feel like there is a component that we're missing. So my, my question, well, there's a motion on the table. I don't, it's oh, okay. a long one, but I know, I'll take I a know. second. Is there a second on that? No second. So now discussion. Um, is there a way to modify that motion to um, appoint this person temporarily? Um, because I still, my biggest concern is that you cannot fit him on a grade five. It just, no matter how you slice $65,000, it doesn't fit in a grade five. That's my concern. Do you have so the comp you, schedule right here? Uh, I can get it for you. Um, uh, what's, isn't it like grade, isn't it like step seven or eight? 65? I, I think I'm pretty sure. It could, so. be, it could be at the top of the step system. That's the challenge because you can't, you can't, your steps are based on experience. So if, right. you, if, you're, if you're saying it's seven or eight years of step, the personnel board is saying that's equivalent to 
you know, that many years of experience or something comparable to that? Well, certification requirements, whatever. Um, I, I, I mean, I think that they understand by going to them and requesting the upgrade, they understand the constraints that we're under, under the grade five. So if they want to complain about us hiring at step eight or nine of the grade five, you know, well, we need somebody here to do our business. It should, it actually is in the, it's in the, it should be in the um, annual report. I mean, in the, we voted at town meeting. We vote the comp schedule at town meeting. So, um, oh yeah, see the, oh, it's not even that bad. It's um, step five is um, step six. It's just about step six. Grade five. Grade five, step six. So if you, if you multiply out 2,000, I think we had come up with 3,125 was 65,000, but um, 3,111 is the um, step six. So actually, that's far better than. Um, How many hours a year? It's 20, to, uh, 2,080. No, no, 2,080. Uh, yeah, but he'd be upgraded by then. We're just we're just talking. We're just talking. Yeah. So, but I I think. Um, I I think that's not going to be a problem, Trevor. Especially if we're talking about upgrading the job. Well, then again, the, my concern is just making sure he. Well, Again, it's just making sure make to anybody has to. It's going to. They have to understand that we're taking this job from a grade five to a grade six. And they'd have to reapply. Yeah. Well, they have. To, yeah, but that would be normal. So yeah. it's 64, okay. 64, 708, 80. I mean, you're three hundred dollars short annually, and and if we hopefully we could upgrade this position. What's oh here? What's the. Um, can you go ahead and have a question? Yeah. I mean, just in terms of upgrading, I just really want to be clear because the Equal Pay Act right. um, has been, you know, you, you can't advertise at a lower amount and then regrade the position and then move, you know, that, yeah, it, that person. That person has to reapply. Right. So yes, I just want to be clear on that. So the, what pro you're the problem you're, is you're, with... you're going to regrade it for the person, well, but, but the, you're not. No, but if you're regrading it, the problem is he's going to be at a step four even at a regrade. I, I, I don't know who he is because right. we don't no, have no, a candidate. No, 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 but 65,000 65, is a step four at grade six. We're going from grade five, step six, and if you, we do upgrade it, the 65,000 is a step four, and we're not supposed to hire above a step two or three. It, right, so the, the exact, right, so at grade five, you can't, the same thing, you can't hire at a step seven. That's exactly well, the, the point. the guideline is, but we as a select board, the, the personnel board gives us a recommendation, and there's nothing you can do when the market is not there. You can't hire anybody for 20 bucks. I'm not sure that's accurate, is that? Right, but you could regrade the position, and then you'd have a better chance of meeting the step appropriately. But you're still not, that's what you're the still, board yes, but you're to still say. not up to, you're still at step four, which is, right. that doesn't solve the problem anyway. So we'll have a problem with the personnel committee no matter what on, on that. Just my concern is setting that expectation f for this hypothetical person that may take the job at grade five that in a few months time when we finally get the, this nailed down that they are possibly out of a job because they... Well, no, we no, because we're not offering more money. We can't offer more money. So it doesn't matter when we grade that we're still going to get not many applicants because the money is practically the same. Look at this. But we have to make it perfectly clear, no matter who we hire, that we're hiring at grade five. And as a town, we're, we're reassessing that. Yeah. And we're going to be changing it to a grade six. And at that point in time, there'll have to be a reapplication. Right. 
But can't be any gray area. Right. Now. Exactly. Yeah. Has but, to be. But we're actually not helping ourselves because there's not going to be any more money. But the job position is really what we're looking for. Is this? But the potential yeah. of earning is higher. In the yes. Six. Yes. Correct. You have in the long run. Potentially, you have more money. We're hoping this person stays yep. a long time. Yes. Yep. Well, if we want him to stay. Yeah. If he does a good job. Yes. Yep. So, yes, it's important to upgrade so we have the potential of getting more money. Because instead of four so years being at the top of the scale. My question was, could you hire uh, somebody on a temp on a interim basis until you got this squared away or not? Is that not something you can do? Well, you have a probationary period. I, I get that. That would be, you. I mean, assuming that we could get this done in 90 days. Should be. I mean, it's not that we, difficult. We would be to able to out. decide, you know, when they would go through the reapplication process, whether we want this person or not. It, it's just that, you know, when you look at the comp scale, there's not much going to be. Yes, you're starting at a lower step, but money-wise, we're not really accessing more money. But whatever. We'll come to that when we go advertise again, I guess. I just want to make sure that we're appointing Dick as building inspector, though, because he um, needs to be our backup um, when no one's here. What do you th no, he's done. When he when we appoint somebody, he's done. No, you still have to have a building. We inspector. can have other backups. We can get it. We, Dick, I want Dick to be done. He's put all his time in. He's had it with this job. He's finished. What? Yeah, but he can't take personal liability on Trevor. What are you talking about? He's, if, he if wants we, to if, retire. We're, Dick is finished at that point. He's not staying on as a building inspector. No, but if we need him to act as a building inspector because there's no one available. This is our last no, formal meeting. No, he's going to be. July first happens. There's no. He has no. Per, he has no coverage by the town. He has no authority. You still need somebody as backup. Until when? I until said, that person's hired. Until we appoint somebody else, Trevor. As an alternate. As an alternate, you have to. Ha you can't expect Dick yeah. to go out. No, Without I don't. The coverage of of the course town. not. I don't. I just and want as of Dick July, wants to his, retire, his, and I don't a, want to keep him coming on and his staying on. His appointment ends June thirtieth. Right. So, if we can't get, you're saying if we can't get somebody no, in the position still, until still, then, you still have to have someone as backup. So we'll find somebody as backup. Dick is done. He's retired. He does then not need to be backup. We can appoint somebody else when we have somebody else. Right. But there is nobody else, and we have oh, not another. Oh, there's got to be. I mean, there's, there's no, no other building inspectors in the whole area to, to ha cover for you. Come on, there's got to be. We have no backup right now. There has to be. I'm just saying this is our last meeting before July 1st, so we need to do this at least temporarily, anyway. So, anyway, there's a motion on the table, and then we can appoint I'm both. I'm thoroughly of them. confused. So. Well, we. No. There's a motion there's on the second, and the second on the table, just for the um, mm -hmm. the grade to offer the grade five position. What's that? There's a. There, right now, there's just a. Oh, I was just clarifying the motion on the table. The motion on the table in a second is to offer the grade five position. Yes. At, yeah. And the. Um, Sorry. And. If, you know, I don't know this person, but, you know, if they're working now, they've got to get a notice. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. Not, okay, I, yep. I don't know that, but... Um, yeah. Um, and then... Dick, or we should try to make Dick available as a resource for bringing this person up to speed. And to do that, we should appoint him as an alternate and not, you know. Until such time as we have yeah. somebody. Yeah. I'd love him to retire. He, well, yeah, I know. He, yeah. You know, yeah, I mean, he's, he's been asking and asking to yeah. be yeah, done he with said this. He's, I don't want to keep. Right. But that's but, why we got to do something. You can't. 
The problem is if you, you, you can't ask him as a resource to do anything if we don't have I him get listed. I get that. Because then he doesn't have coverage by the town. I get that. That's, it's a, I mean, you have to have legal authority to do anything. Understood. Mm -hmm. I understand that. I and just, I don't want to just keep Dick on. I just, he wants to well, be done. Well, we can appoint him as an alternate done. and he can decline the appointment. And when he's, and when we get somebody, we can, can finally get a, and he can resign. And also. we can get somebody else yeah. to, yeah. yeah. But it's important, appointed. it's important to, to do, we have to do the paperwork before July 1st. And then our next meeting is not until July 9th. So we, we have to make these decisions now on these regulatory authority kind of things. You can't have people sign off that aren't already appointed. And my question is, there's nobody else in the county that could do an alternate so that Dick is done. Well, I don't have, I don't know who is available and who, and no one's been contacted, apparently. I mean, did, did, Diane, did you make any con, any phone calls to anybody? I did so, not know this was going to be addressed, so I did not. I didn't well, either. the building commissioner is empty. We have to appoint people. <laughs> well, no, that doesn't make right. sense. No, we, I think we had talked about perhaps looking for, uh, but. You know, I mean, that's what you, 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 do. you have to appoint somebody. It's like not appointing the police. You know, I mean, that kind of thing. You have to appoint people for July 1st. So, and this is our last official meeting. So let's, let's deal with hiring the person at, for 65,000 or what did we say it was grade six? I mean, uh, step six, grade five, step six. Mm -hmm. I can't. I just. I got to do it right. I'm sorry. That's but all go right. ahead. I, I'm fine. Well, I know I you're up yes. against. Yep. I vote yes. Okay. okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Oh. And no. so. Um, and Trevor, are you voting? No. I just want to get it done correctly. But I understand you guys are under a. Okay. We're under a pinch. I get it. You, I just want to clarify. So you just said. So you voted to offer grade five, step six. At one point, you had said very specifically you wanted it to be clear. It was until such time as the position was regraded. It just we have to make any candidates aware that we're looking at a, a commissioner's job okay. that's going to be a grade six, and they're going to have to apply for it. Okay. And Thank so, who are you? Who are you? So since you didn't vote, we'll not right. make you do it. So you're going to call Bob. I don't. I don't know him. I can get the number from somebody. Yeah, get the number from Diana and, and make have a conversation with them. Okay. And so, um, since we don't have an official meeting, if you get him to agree, then I would make a motion that we. Um, what, what's his correct name? Is it Robert? I mean, obviously it's Bob. Robert but Walden. Wa Robert. Walden. Does he have an initial? Um, I don't think so. Let me look here, let's see. I don't know if I've got now. Uh, I don't think I've got now. Uh, well, it, I, it probably is okay just to say Robert Walden. What, if, if he hasn't, if his official name has a signature. Uh, uh, right, an initial. initial. We wanna make sure that the, the minutes reflect the correct Right. Um, name. Name is legal name. Um, as building commissioner, effective today. Um, if he accepts. Yeah. Effective. Uh, uh, is acceptance of, uh, acceptance of the of acceptance of the job, so that we can vote on it. Would you second that then? I second it. All okay. those in favor. Aye. Aye. Um, and so then we would make a. Um, well, no, we have to, depending on he says yes or no, we still have to have a building commissioner. So if he happens to say no, we have to say that Dick is the alternate building commissioner as of um, July 1. July 1, mm -hmm. just in case Bob doesn't take it. So um, I make a motion um, as of July 1st, um, 2019, Dick be named as or appointed as alternate building commissioner. I'll second that. Discussion. So 
if um, then don't. I do want to cover the town as well. I just I don't want to do this to Dick. Um, so my issue is I would love to find somebody else that could cover for him. I know Dick said that he wanted to help acquaint Bob to the town. Um, I want Bob to be successful. I want Bob here. I just want to hire him in the correct format. Um, so I want that on record. Um, my issue is um, I assume Dick would be the alternate until we found a replacement for him at any time during the well, year, right? Well, we, well, well we the can, reason we were appointing yeah. him commissioner, because you're required by law to have a commissioner. Correct. So if Bob accepts a job, then we can, our next meeting, July 9th, mm -hmm. we can make um, Dick the alternate inspector and whoever else, you know, we can find. Because mm -hmm. you have to call around. I mean, you have to ask I'll, people. I'll, I, yeah, I can do that. Okay, That's so we fine. can call just, around and ask, you know, we can ask Dick or Bob. Maybe Bob knows a few mm -hmm. people that he feels comfortable working with. You have to have someone that is I want the, obviously the, that the, will the um, new, yeah. um, back up you adequately right so you need um, and you need bob to make that decision who right. that alternate is that he wants right um, obviously it's dick because we're in a time crunch here but i think bob needs to make that decision and then and i know dick Absolutely. wants to help whoever gets in this position right. and i want him to have that so, ability so and what, authority to do that but so i what, do want him to be free so what from we this would job. do is when if if bob takes the job he would become i mean we're appointing him if he takes a job commissioner. Correct. And so what will happen is then Dick would be alternate inspector and we would list whoever Bob wants as alternate inspectors. You don't need to have more than one commissioner. But the only reason we're appointing Dick temporarily alternate commissioner is because you still need a commissioner. If if for doesn't some reason happen. Doesn't negotiations happen. don't we, work. Yep. July first will come and go, you still need a, a commissioner. I want Bob. Right, so Dick hopefully really to be done. Um, Dave will get the contact information and organize the whole thing with Bob so we can figure out when he's starting. But, but we have the money in this budget year so he could to, you know, start technically right away. And you had yes, spoken I to know him. he wants to start. Yeah, and, and he, you had spoken has, to him yes. a while ago, so he should be ready for it. He's anxious, I think, to get started. I, I know he is finishing up a couple of projects. I, I told him to hang on until we get through this process of grading and setting the job right, and he said, no problem, I'll wait. So I, that's why I wanted to wait. I, don't, I didn't want to push it through. So that's why I'm voting no. Well, because I wanted it to be correctly so when he came in, he felt comfortable and secure and he didn't have to decide in three months that he was going to have to reapply and see who else comes in. I wanted him to be set up long term. I, I, think, I think actually if, when Dave goes to call him, I don't think it's going to be a big issue because the money is, is not going to be any more money. And, and it really was the money issue that was, I think... You know, the other I'm not sure he's going to want to hear that. Well, <laughs> he has the potential to have earn more money now, right. but our initial offer of money isn't any more money. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, we won't be able to offer any more money just because we're regrading it. Other than if you're if you're not here for, I mean, you you have you have the growth potential for six years instead mm -hmm. of the growth potential for four years. Right. <laughs> That's not going to help us yeah. get more candidates. We really, you know, what came out of the meeting the other night, so we really need to look at, I know, there at are where those positions jobs. are and find, you know, look at all of our jobs and where those are compared with the region. Um, and that the region is not, you know, it's hard to hire people. There's The unemployment is so low. There's not many people in the trades. That's Very difficult. That's why I want us to take some time on that those positions in that office that he's going to be supervising. I, I would like his input on that. Mm -hmm. and, and I want to set him up to succeed, and that, that's right, my biggest me too. concern. So I think Dave can convey that, right, Dave? Yes. Even though there is this threat of having to reapply, I think it won't be seen as a threat. A threat is an opportunity that to earn more money, potentially. And if we have to jump a step or two, um, if he's really successful, then that's okay too to keep him. 
you know, I don't know. Okay. It shouldn't be too bad of a deal. But we've got to have this in place for July 1st. I mean, this is the problem that we are running up against. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Okay. All right. Okay. Do we? You needed an executive session? Mm -hmm. Or did, was it, or do you need anything else on that? Do we need, did we vote that have Dick as an alternate? Um, or no? I made the motion. Do you second so, it, right? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I jumped in in the middle of that. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so you're going to get the contact information from Diana, right? Yes. Okay. And you'll get his resume. I got, I got that, Oh, you got all that? Yeah, okay. Good. I don't have the resume on yet. Well, I think Diana does, but I'll, okay. I'll text you the, um, his contact. Okay. I'm happy to talk to him, too. I just feel well, awkward. No, I, I feel awkward now because... Yeah, but that's why I don't. David, Dave can do it. Okay. And that way you're off, you don't have to feel uncomfortable. Um, I understand your viewpoint. I know, but I, this I is also too. something that shouldn't be taken care of four months ago. Ain't that the truth? So, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a story so, of my I, life. It's just, you know. And we went, then we wouldn't have had to worry about the July first date. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Um, is there anything offhand that we haven't? Um, I can't think of anything that we um, haven't appointed that we have to worry about for July first. Um, that we missed. I noticed that on your appointment list, you don't appoint your town accountant. You don't pursue it to Mass General Law. No, they've been hot. That's. Why not? I mean, Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 55, basically is when you, a town does appoint a town accountant by statute. So just, just FYI, I mean, I'm, I don't know if there's a difference between appointing and hiring, but I do think in well, the Well, maybe then we should, to. just because it's the last, I make, a I make a motion that we appoint Brenda Hill as our town accountant. I'll second that. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Can you check that out, Diana? Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I'm I don't, at I don't right think we online, but I, I mean, we I've never had in the times we've been here. I st she's really? never been on the list. So. Yeah, you can. It's one of the positions you can appoint. You can, in fact, have a contract but and do you, you need can appoint to? for more than one year. Do you I need think to appoint? you can uh, if you want to appoint for more than one year. I think you can just hire I didn't appoint her well. for 40 years. But, um, <laughs> what do you mean? You know, some towns do 14. Four, more hiring. 40 years. And, but usually your department heads you do appoint. Okay. Before we go into an executive session, I sense there's some public comment. I know somebody's been waiting a long time to talk, and so just, do we need oh, to address right. uh, Matt? So, we'll let, we'll, so Matt had a request to resign the agreements with Deerfield Naturals due to the name change, and I think he was just waiting to see. We didn't get that on the agenda for today, but because right. you guys aren't going to meet for a couple weeks, yep. he'd asked if he could come under new business. Um, yes. So Deerfield Naturals is changing uh, their name from Deerfield Naturals LLC to Deerfield Naturals Incorporated. I, I think it should be um, uh, business not anticipated. Yeah, it was. Rather okay. than new business, because new business still needs to be on the agenda. Whereas business not anticipated yeah. can okay. We didn't okay. anticipate right. this. Whatever. Okay, sure. <laughs> All right. yeah. So basically, um, yeah, and I don't think, you know, we're just not changing, we're not changing the tax ID number. He's not changing any of the dynamics of the company. It's just a name change. Or the, um, the structure. Payments is a host agreement. Oh, right. You're not weaseling out of something? No. <laughs> Except it will say Teasing. Deerfield Naturals Inc. Yep. instead of LLC. That is the okay. only difference. So there you, are five documents that I have uh, with the town. There's two host agreements, the development agreement. There's the one-page certification form uh, that the CCC requires, and then mm -hmm. there's the DPH letter. So I'm looking yep. for all five of those to be revised. So um, I make a motion that we um, sign them. Um, and can we just look at them? Yeah. Up for, yeah, he doesn't have them redone. I don't yeah, do they're just. I do not. No, because no, no, this came up I think pretty town quick. Council has yeah, we the, have the electronic version, so yeah. we're oh, going to have okay. to redo them and have you resign yeah, them. So He's we'll just telling sign. us. We the just wanted to right. approve okay. them tonight. The oh. only one I can provide is the host community agreement certification yeah. form. The no, other ones, no, I that's fine. I just wanted to look at them before, but what we can do is vote them tonight, Matt. Right. And then we'll come in and sign. Yeah, you'll sign. Oh, okay, perfect. And there was. 
Um, That'll be an INC then. Yeah. Right. So, all so of that Matt, you said two host agreements, the one page certification, the DPH letter. What was the fifth thing? Two host agreements, a one page certification. Uh, the development agreement. No. And Diana, then, would you just and make sure the zip code is correct? Right. You yeah, that was, the that, that was an issue from before. So, okay. yep. that zip code Actually, was zip incorrect. Code on the, uh, and that's on the mm -hmm. development agreement and the two host community agreements. That okay. zip code's wrong on the first page. All right. Yep. Yeah, the zip code from the EPA for contact as well, too. I saw that, too. Oh, which, you mean here? On this, you mean, or something no, from else? from the EPA, from, uh, we were talking oh, about Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, they got 7-5 instead of 7-3. Oh, that's Sunderland, yeah. Oh, on well, the, uh, the on this Sunderland. here, you mean? <laughs> yeah, right, we'll send it to them. <laughs> You're right, maybe we shouldn't say anything about no. <laughs> that. No, it was 7-3, but, oh, down here, down here. Down here. For contact? Oh, yeah, right there. Yeah, and right there. Yeah, thank you. So we'll have to fix those. Okay. So I'm good for that. Do you need, do you need no, no, no. Okay. It looks like it truly yep. is. That's okay. all it is. Um, then I, I made the motion to um, make sure it goes under Diana so it can't be um, yep. problematic uh, with the vote. It's business not anticipated. Okay. Um, and uh, so I make that motion. Of a second? And yeah, I just want to add the only other piece of that is that the, the date has to be updated because the entity did not exist at that time period. Right. So the date so will have to change change. along with the. Right. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. No okay. problem. Yep. Sure. Um, there you go. So, um, so we have a second. Oh, wait, uh, we should add on to it that we will come in and sign it at our leisure mm -hmm. when they are available. Yep. Okay. When the lawyer makes them available. Okay. Yep, we have a second. All those, in, uh, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. You are set. Thank you. Thank you for coming in. Thanks for spending the whole night Sorry. with us for that. I, I do. It wasn't um, anticipated. Right, so it wasn't anticipated. I was happy to get it in. Thank you. The, um, uh, yeah, otherwise you'd have to wait till Maybe I'm not July. supposed to ask it, but do you know the, uh, how your application process is going with the state? Yeah, I mean, as soon as we have this, everything else is together, so. Just waiting to hear yeah, that. We'll be within a couple of weeks, I hope. Okay. And yep. uh, your guess is as good as mine. When will we hear back from them? So. Okay. Why well, don't um, you just, I just want to mention, I did give you a copy of the DDIC letter. Yes. Um, so Paul was sitting here, he just left, but I do want to make sure that you do yes. know you've I read it. got I, a copy I, of that. I read <laughs> okay, it and thank I asked you. Matt, Matt said he would look into that. You talked to Matt. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. Because I know thank Paul, you, I don't know if Paul, that's what Paul was waiting for, but I just want to make sure you did. I asked that. for public comment, but he said no. So. Okay. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, now, Thanks, Matt. Um, did the state actually give him a curb cut here? Yeah, yes. The state yep. gave the state the Okay. Yep. There's not much we can do about it. Nope. No, it's not our business. It's mm -hmm. the state Actually, that's where the original driveway was. I was know. it? Yeah. 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 Huh. When we were. Years ago. Years ago, when we were actually doing security there. Yeah. Watching the artifacts. Oh, right, right. Um, they were just watching the artifacts over here, and Maybe. they were actually over there. Oh, is that right? <laughs> Right. Maybe that's why um, they allowed the cook up to happen because it was already disturbed. It yeah. was already yeah. there. Yeah. Possibly, yeah. Um, so we're going to we're going to enter into executive these? session. Um, we will return to open session immediately immediate the following. Um, so pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21A, three. The, uh, to conduct strategy with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigating position of the public body and the chair so does declare. I do declare. So um, can I have a motion to go in? I make a motion. I'll s uh, second. Second that motion. Um, I no. vote yes. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Uh, aye. Dave Wolfram. And again, we'll, we'll, um, we'll return from executive session. Briefly. Uh, briefly, and then close out of business. Yep. So. Thank you. We're uh, back from executive session and open meeting, and um, we are here to vote and sign the contract agreement with the police union. We're um, starting in uh, FY, well, starting in July 1st, 2019, ending 
July, let's see. June 30th. June 30th, 2022. Two. So um, can I have a motion to? I make that motion. Make a motion. I'll uh, second it. Second the motion. All those in favor, or any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 And so uh, um, before we leave, can we just verify the meetings? Because I'm really embarrassed and I did not know that there was yep. a yep, 530 can do that. tonight. Sure. And then do you, I don't know if you had it. Do you want to talk a little report? I'd love I mean, to I hear quick, from you. I have a yeah. quick, quick If you've one. got a quick couple things, that's great. Okay. Um, let's see. So <clears throat> as Carolyn mentioned, we have a couple grants that I talked to Trevor about. We need to implement the tree grant. Um, and um, hopefully we'll be know something about the MVP grant very soon and we will we, we sign. have to sign that we have to sign it so I'm right. gonna come in uh, tomorrow <laughs> just and get noti yeah. notarized yeah oh, okay because I yeah. can do a notarized signature so I'll come we're in we're gonna sign it business tomorrow morning. he's gonna get sign. notarized okay so we'll take care of that yeah. tomorrow so then you're done. gonna fax I'm it. gonna get them right in to them okay because yeah. they wanted them by Friday 21st yep. yeah Friday tomorrow. exactly okay. yep do it tomorrow morning yep uh, so those two we had our complete streets oh can I can I just um uh, back on the tree grant. Oh yeah. Jean Gromacki was really looking for another mm -hmm. tree. Yeah. So if we are in the tree purchasing business, could we make sure that cuz Jean that had on sent top of the list. Yeah, cuz she had, she letter, had, right? Yeah, she had sent us a letter and she had a very, you know, she had been asking for tree replacement for several months. So Okay. What's her address, Carolyn? Do you know? Um, yeah. Or is it Sugarloaf Street? I think it's Sugarloaf. I don't we'll have. I don't. Okay. We'll find yeah. it. Uh, uh, Dave, uh, I don't, I don't, check in with Kevin. I don't have her letter. Oh, Kevin. Kevin. Yeah. Okay. Okay. It is All right. right. Yeah. All right. I'll yeah. check with Kevin just to make sure I have the right. I, I just don't have. I don't they have a letter. They had to take out a tree, so there's one missing, and she's hoping okay. to get it replaced. Okay. Um, so we had the Complete Streets um, kickoff for our prioritization plan last week. Um, one of the things I wanted to, um, I didn't get a chance to catch up with Darius tonight, but I would, I mentioned at that meeting, and I would like to uh, inquire uh, with the school about joining the Safe Routes to School program, which is something that a school applies for, and you become a partner with the state, and through that Safe Routes to School program, you can apply for different funding for actual infrastructure improvements for trails, sidewalks, bicycle paths, things like that like that to get to school for safe routes, like within, I think, a mile or two mm -hmm. within your elementary school. Um, and there's also other kinds of programs. That would be fabulous because that would that, pick up this intersection. Exactly. Like, I think there's lots of ways that we could have to get into the school that we could identify and we can create yeah. safe paths. It doesn't just have it's to be. A lot be, of kids walk. Right. And, it can know. be different kind of pathways. It doesn't just have to be like sidewalks. Either. Right. So that's why I like it. It's yep. different yeah, it's you know, open. avenues. Yeah. Um, speaking of Darius, we, we did have our regional um, HR kickoff meeting last week too, and Darius was there along with um, myself and Sherry. Uh, excuse me, Sherry wasn't there for Sunderland, but Sunderland is involved in Conway and Waitley and the schools, and I'm we're looking at uh, the possibility of sharing some HR resources yes. and what that would look like. Definitely so we're needed. working on that grant. Yep. Thank um, you. The electric car charging, we did a survey at uh, the school's frontier um, at the before the end of the year, and we got some good results. Uh, Lori just called me about it today, and as Emma said, we want to kind of move to the next step. So we're working with the school administration and public works to sort of ascertain where the best places for these would be and, and what makes sense for the constituents. And, and some of the feedback that I heard on that is that it's a lot of planning and discussion, especially at the high school. Elementary school, no kids drive. So the high school is a little more tricky right. because who gets to park there? Right, exactly. You know, does and somebody in the neighborhood exactly. come and park right. the car and then walk home at right. night? Do you have like a policy? Who pays for yeah. it? Yep. Yeah, all yep. of that. Because so, exactly. it's parking in cars and kids is... Yep. It's already difficult over there, but yep, so absolutely. that's one of those things that yeah, was so, so a major think, concern. Right. So, we'll, so that we'll was one of the things we were trying to get. I think what Lori was hoping for is to get some information back from the from the school administration staff and yep. otherwise of what the utilization would be. Um, you know what the what the sort of sense of of interest would be, and if there would be some problems about um, who might access it. And then yep. and then Darius had a, a reasonable question of how, how is it going to be funded? Because right. normally if they're free, you know somebody. Is is paying yep. know, for the, the yep. station. So, sure. um, so we're still working on that. 
Um, I met with the DDIC um, last Thursday. I had a great meeting with DDIC, and they, um, we did talk about, um, I had mentioned uh, months ago that we had a reach out from the Mass Office of Business Development. There is a company in Waitley um, that is interested in expanding mm -hmm. um, that may want to access some uh, Deerfield resources. Um, and so there had been some discussion over the years in the last, like, 50, 30, 20, <laughs> 10 years. years about these kinds of things and some challenges. Um, but the DDIC board did agree to appoint a representative to speak um, on behalf of them to Mass Office of Business Development Great. and talk to them about, um, you know, to at least address what the challenges this. are. What yeah, to, to see if they're, what, what the ask is, basically. We haven't mm -hmm. really had a formal ask from right. Covestro. And it's not, it's Covestro is the company. And it's not through the town of Waitley. It's directly with the company. Yep. Um, so there were some concerns about how, you know, working with the town of Waitley and their industrial park and some of those challenges, because that's privately owned. And mm -hmm. so, um, but anyway, so they've agreed to participate in that in okay. that conversation. I'm really excited about that. Yeah, so. That's one of those things that there's very old resentment in town because Whaley refused to join. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. And so that's yeah. why they put in that gate for all well for all intents and purposes a permanent barrier mm. along that south side. Yeah. So but you can't have egress. You can't have right anything going through there. Right. But be nice to change this that. is a new day and age when it is. we when, are looking for new sewer pairs and so. new regionalization partners, right. new jobs, yeah. jobs. And, yeah. it, and if yeah. and if that company moves out of the area, everybody's a loser. Mm -hmm. Those are jobs that are have gone away. And they're trying to pull them from all over the world. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they can they can yeah, go they're anywhere. They're, they're international. international. So it yeah. is pretty yeah. so exciting. So if it, we need to support this mm -hmm. from increasing our sewer user base and all that kind of stuff, but also just to protect regional jobs. Absolutely. Because it affects all losing, of us. You know how many jobs up the street at Channing? I know. Yep. So they have, um, as I said, so they've appointed Ralph Healy as a representative, and I'm excited because Ralph's also on the Franklin County CDC on the loan board, so he's also um, engaged in um, you know, retaining and attracting he's businesses to the area. So. Yeah. Yep. Um, uh, let's see, green communities, we are wrapping up, we finished the boiler project, we're wrapping up all the paperwork. As MA said, we are finishing up our technical assistance grant that we had through green communities for the landfill development, solar development. So we should have a meeting with you and sort of see where Great. our next steps are because as she mentioned, DOR um, we, the, is oversubscribed to the program. So now we're kind of back to having these two applicants but no sort of financial um, measurement right. for that. So we, you know, that we we'll can give you some out. information about mm -hmm. how to proceed, but okay. we should schedule that. And we'll have Beth Greenblatt has been our consultant on okay. that, so we should have her yeah, come definitely. as well. Definitely. Um, uh, let's see. I just want to mention, uh, uh, Carolyn had asked me to give you a draft copy uh, or give you a copy of the Senior Center Program and Operations Assessment, yep. which I gave you all a copy yep. of tonight. So mm -hmm. we'll put this on a future agenda. Um, I've also asked the BOO, um, the Senior Center BOO, to, to address this. I don't think it has been addressed, Trevor. No, but, it hasn't. Um, no, we need, I mean, we so need to really get back on, on that. We've talked about, you know that we're looking, we're actively looking for candidates for our Council on Aging, for yes. Field Council on Aging. Yep. Um, Brian, Sherry, and I um, will be meeting to talk about the senior center um, and how the council, basically Brian wants a little more information about, he's the administrator in Waitley, about what we're doing with our Council on Aging, about our aging healthy designation and all that. So we're going to have a meeting uh, to talk about that. But um, the seniors are really anxious to get going on some of these things. So I just want to remind you guys that we're looking for those appointments yes, and if you are. know anybody to, to start talking names. about yep. that. Um, and I think that's all I have right now. Okay. I think everything else is on the agenda. Good. Well, it's, um, school's out, which is exciting. The um, kids are all gone from school and um, thank all the teachers and staff for keeping them safe and educating them all year long. Um, and I'm sure everybody's looking for a little rest. Um, but administration keeps rolling forward on the, um, on the good work that they're doing and staffing up for the next year. So um, what else is going on? 
We signed the PEC agreement. We did get that signed. So you might remember we had this year, July 1st, in our health insurance, we're doing some minor plan design changes. Mm -hmm. So we had to have our union representatives from the police, the school, and the retirees all sign an agreement to agree yeah. to that. So it's taken about a year to get all that done, yes. but we finally got the school reps to sign it, and the police and retirees are um, have agreed. So that's all set. So July 1st, we can make our plan design changes, and there's no issues. That's great. Just let you know that's really good. Um, yesterday, um, I had an opportunity to talk about the new um, foundation formula. Mm -hmm. And um, so Natalie's already setting up meetings because um, potentially we're going to lose money. I mean, nothing's official yet. So, But she's already starting to set up meetings so that we can appeal any lost funding. So. And did you also see, I, I'll send you, I don't know if you got it directly. I thought that, I don't know if you sent it to me, but that small town summit mm -hmm. is doing zip codes. Yes. Did you see They've that stuff for zip for codes? Yeah. So I, they're uh, we looking have, at. Natalie, I, I, you know, so I told her it was about 11.2% of the households in South Deerfield, under South Deerfield's zip code is actually Waitley's. Mm -hmm. And she, she couldn't believe it. I said it was 315 out of 2,800. Shelburne and Buckler are the same way. Mm -hmm. And just, I said it's not fair. And, and I said we, we need to have some kind of waiver for the other zip code. And I explained it to her, and she totally got, got it. She says, oh, that's what you were talking about. And I said, yes. This is why I've been crazy for since a year ago, February. So um, because Skip Olmstead and you and I, went to that meeting and w w the initial calculation was a $300,000 cut. It's, we and can't it, even it, raise she that did much not, as a whole town. Natalie did not think that that was going to be that steep, mm -hmm. but because she didn't have any final figures because no figures are final, mm -hmm. but we were definitely losing money. And, but not, she didn't think it was, a, she said I would have remembered if it was 300,000. So, but the problem is it's, it's forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not just like we're getting a three hundred thousand dollar cut this year. It's this is our amount reduced permanently, mm -hmm. and um, so anyway, she's already working because we're not the only one in her district. There's several, so she's already working out. She's talked to DeLeo that it would be an issue, and she's already setting up meetings. She's wonderful. We had, I mean, it really was productive yesterday. I'm glad you had a Cause it, you good know, ride out and talk yeah, about that stuff. Yeah, we, we, we did a lot of, um, you know, as long as I was there, it was yeah. worth talking about all these things and trying to hit bases with people. Yep. So um, anyway, it's going to be a long slog because we're not going to be the only ones that are, I mean, because it's the same pot. That was yep. our problem. It's the same pot and they're reallocating it. Mm -hmm. And so the money has to come from somewhere. So what we need to do is just screech and yell and and I've already been complaining so Nally's aware of it again and we just we just have got to let them know we can't take a cut right. and, and you know by God we need more money they're yeah. they are funding us less they're like 20% now Every year. and I remember when I first in the 2000s the early 2000s the first thing we did as the select board was go and have this big protest and it was like 36% and here we're down to 20%. I mean, honestly. I mean, it's just every year is a cut. And yep. we have just have been absorbing it. And we just can't do it. Right. And, we, and we, so somehow we've got to have, like, this whole Union 38, like, busload. We've got to decide we're going to rent a bus and just go down and, like, beat on doors and make a big scene. Because it, it, it's all of us. It's not just Deerfield. Right. And, um, I mean, none of us can take a cut. No. So we're going to have to do something. We're going to have to organize something, I think, um, right. to move this along. But Natalie is working on it. That's good. And they're, they, they're aware that there's going to be protests. Hmm. So the last thing I would like to say is please come out and vote on Monday, oh, however yeah, you Monday. vote. But just show this is your civic duty to um, guide the town and uh, please come out and um, vote. I think it's from 10 to 8. 12, I th or is it 10? Oh, well, let me it's know. It's usually 10 to 8. 10, 10, 10, 10 to 8, right? I know it starts at 10. Yeah, it starts at 10, usually goes till 8. Don't wait that long, though. <laughs> come, come early. It's a, 
Didn't say it on the I think it's 10 I'm, I'm pretty sure pretty it's sure. 10. Okay. It's never noon. No. I've, I've never had a noon. Okay. Um, so please, please come out. Um, and I'll take a motion to... Well, no, can we just go over the meetings? Oh, because right. I'm sorry I'm, about I, that. Yep, we have... Um, I just want to make sure, because we have a meeting tomorrow, 4 to 6. Tomorrow? What? For yes, what? we do. It's a joint meeting with the planning board? No. No? No. They don't. We don't have a joint meeting. We are invite. We were invited because it's their working session. We there's no joint meeting with the select board. It's a planning no. board meeting. It's a working session that Chris Curtis set up. Oh. So that's why you and I have been invited. Yeah, so not. you guys are not coming. <laughs> nope. Okay. But I was planning to go. All right. So that's you guys that's can here. come because it is a posted meeting of the planning board. If you want, it's to dis it's a working session to talk about the green infrastructure stuff we've been doing through MVP. Okay. So and then they're having a regular meeting. I think a hearing on the stuff next week as well. Okay. So. All right, but we can't go to that one because we already are going right. to the um, Mapco, Mapco annual meeting, which we meeting. did the post for you too. Uh, yeah. The Mapco annual meeting is I've four to eight. I've got that down. They're yeah. Four to eight. Yep. And um, then the following Wednesday, Wednesday we're not meeting the twenty sixth. Well, yeah. Well, we're, not. we're doing. We ha the well. There's a Franklin Conservation District here meeting at 8:30. There's a nine o'clock creating resilient communities meeting at, and then 11 o'clock mitigation meeting. Uh, the mitigation has this mitigation that's, team. That's all yeah. during the day, right? Yeah. yeah. We don't have a night meeting. No. no. Okay. No I'm night meeting. I'm going to. I gotta be gone. I'm gonna be gotta work. Um. No, no, no. That's but we're moving ahead on the <laughs> house mitigation. <laughs> okay. Because you'll have to. Both of you will have to sign off on it, but you'll. Mm -hmm. This is my third hazardous mitigation plan. Yep. You know, you the five-year yeah. Yeah, okay. five plan. So yep. basically we're updating it, and we're integrating it, hopefully, with MVP program this time. So it should, it will, it will be a little bit different, but not too much different, and it will, it will be... Um, All-encompassing. Yeah, well... It, it will integrate. integrate. It will integrate successfully with the M, M, no. There will be no contradictions with our MVP program. Basically, We're, we, I'm not sure how we can pull it in, but Kimberly, I asked Kimberly to do that, and that's what I testified that we're going to have a more useful five-year mitigation plan that instead mm -hmm. of sitting on the shelf, we'll actually use it. Okay. So um, uh, the week of July 1st, we are not meeting. Right, I don't have anything for July. Yes, the whole first enjoy, week. Enjoy, please enjoy. Well, I'm I'm Independence Day. Yeah, and your families be safe. Um, and I will be. I'm not. Um, I'm away the week after that. Just I don't. You know, I. So we have a board of health have, meeting. So on the I 8th. have a contract that goes until June thirtieth. Yes, you do. So we. May so have I don't to, know uh, if you want to appoint another. I thought person. we didn't sign a contract. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't you don't have another meeting before right. June 30, before July 1st. Yeah, but we didn't sign the contract. Uh, well, you, you, yeah, you appointed, you made me an offer that ended June 30th, basically. Right, right. And then but, we, we yeah, but in the offer, it, it extended, right? But it was on a mutual <laughs> extension. I think it could be mutually extended, but we haven't had that discussion to mutually well, extend it. Well, then I just vote we extend it until we are no longer need your services, I guess. That way, does that cover it? No. no. I guess. I mean, I, I'm just, I'm just letting you know. I mean, I'm so I'm not planning to. I mean, I have um, had made plans the second week of July, so I can't be Listen, here. Listen, the and second I week, the eighth through the twelfth, you're gone. Correct. Okay, and we and have I a we have a board of health meeting heard that from night. You just after that, but I still well, we can't. Come back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I assume <laughs> you, you will want too. Me to. Well, I we shouldn't have back. a board of health meeting if she's not going to be there to right. facilitate because we're having a public hearing on the. Tattoos and the um, vaping. Is that all ready to go? I, I, that's I, I'm that's, not that's clear Dick on that. Yeah, that, I mean right? I've given I've given over the stuff all's I it have. Is, all's it is but. is you cross off Northampton and you well, put the, in Deerfield. Isn't the health agent do that? Doesn't isn't that what they do? No? I think that, well, at the meeting I'm, he I'm did confused. say he would. I'm pretty sure he he, he was said he was going right? to take care of it. No? Yeah. Am I so I'll make sure that we've. You have to put it on. All it is is it's a it's a typing thing. So we're gonna make Dick type it, type it out. Priscilla. Priscilla. Well, somebody should. Or somebody, yeah. I mean, just just he needs I, to I just, just cause it to be done. It was... he, doesn't he have to do it himself? But he's uh, got staff people that he can 
that when support and I'll, I'll make sure well that was I did the um, tobacco mm -hmm. stuff but I didn't do um, I mean I have ascertained the Northampton ones you talked about are you but talking I, about the tattooing one the tattooing yeah. ones. you just yeah. cross out Northampton and you but the document has to be yeah. you know Deerfield has to be typed in somebody yes. has to type in Deerfield well that's in the health department right in the well somebody agent, needs no? to follow up on it well no. I just assumed, I thought he was doing that, but I, I'm confused. Okay. All right, if not, then we'll check. All right, so we are gonna have... Um, well, normally the, we were gonna have a meeting anyways, right? Right, well, every, yeah, every but I didn't realize that, every, that we didn't have a contract and we didn't have a person. Because you were you're talking be, about Board of Health or you're talking about the next meeting for me? Well, I was well, talking about Board of Health. Oh, I'm not, yeah, I wouldn't be here for that. I'm not right. here that week. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. Uh, we, we don't have... Why would we have a meeting without? We set one up for once every beginning of every month. I know, but that was before we didn't appoint, reappoint her or have her I assumed be she here. was going to continue on. We've had that discussion, correct? Yes. Oh, yes. I'm just letting okay. you know that, yeah, I'm going to be gone that week and I plan That's to fine. come back. Right. If you don't want me to text me while I'm gone. <laughs> <laughs> David, well, you call pack a me. Fat bag in case you're not come <laughs> well, Dave, would, you call me and tell me. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I would like to post the Board of Health. Yes, we had said that we were going to do Board of Health the first week of, I mean, the first or the second, second Monday yeah. of second the month. Monday. Right. right. We but I would like to move it to the third Monday of the month so that we Diana would be here. Okay. That, I'm Is, good with David, that. are you working that night? Mm -hmm. oh. But we were going to meet at 5 o'clock. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay, so if we meet at 5 o'clock... On right. the 15th, on Diana 50. can be here. Okay, so that's July 15th. 15th okay. You're good through July 15th. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I don't want us to meet when we don't have, you know, everybody here. Okay. So, I'm good. I, I'm, I'm, okay. I'm fine. No, I make sense. I don't, well, we get a select board meeting on the 9th. Yeah, we have a select yes, board meeting. Yes, we do. And I won't be here for that. <laughs> Are you sure? Yeah, we have an energy I won't solar. Be. Discussion. No, no I okay. need. I really need. We. I need to be here for that, and well, that Kevin be should be too. Then, if you're um, not here, yeah, well, I think it would. Be, I mean, maybe I can talk to Kevin. If Kevin's here, I want either Kevin or I should be there because we've had three energy committee people, and we've had me and Kevin. And I think Kevin, we just should be there to also be a part of that discussion. Well, I don't feel comfortable us. having that meeting. So if that Kevin night, can. If so You're then we move that one to the, we'll have to tell her, that, and then she was gone that week anyway, so it's going to be the 17th. Yep. Okay. Okay. Is that going to be your regular meeting night now, David? What is our regular meeting Yes, it was a regular night? meeting night. That's our going to be our regular yes. one. That's, so your, that's board, your day off, David. Yeah, right? the 17th okay. and the 31st, I'm okay. available. Okay, All so right, we're having perfect. a meeting at 6 o'clock on the 17th and at yep. 6 o'clock we'll, on the... 31st. Yeah, yep. those are our okay. go back to our regular schedule. And okay. When is the um, all right? The um, warrant needs to be signed on the third. Yeah, so that is a good a good point. So on the off weeks now, your warrants are going to need to be signed. So Brenda had asked me for you guys to attend yes. to that by either voting for one of you to sign it or or just. We already voted for, to voted to have one person sign. Okay, perfect. But Trevor and I are both in town, so yeah, we can come come in. Anytime. Okay, on sign Wednesday it. and okay. sign it. Okay, if it's available Tuesday night. Through yeah. Wednesday, we'll be mm -hmm. fine. Okay, yeah. all right. We're good. Just we just, just, we'll, we'll let's keep on it. top of that because they, they will get, uh, they'll definitely want those warrants to get we'll signed. Have, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Call okay. Me if you're not in or anybody. All right. Yeah, so we'll take care of that. that in mind. Mm -hmm. No problem. Okay. Um, and then, so then we're on the, if we sign the third, if Trevor and I sign the third, then we're on the warrant schedule for the 17th and the 31st yep. without yep. trouble. Exactly. Okay. And I think actually, we didn't have warrants tonight. Yeah, right? no, I think you'd still be on the well, opposite uh, warrant. If I remember right, right uh, Brenda was going to be gone, so we d must have done well, the warrants we have, already for her, you right? You did them last week because you're on the last opposite. week. Yeah, yeah. this isn't your normal. Because she was going to be away. I think. So we have warrants next week, the yeah. 26. Correct. And what I'm thinking though is she was trying to get those done for like the 20th or 21st or something or other. Well, I she forget probably, what it was. But. We, we need to sign them before the end of the year. Yeah, so whatever so, she, yeah, have her reach let out us to us know. if she needs anything. Okay. Because um, Trevor and I could stop by again that week. Yep. Okay. That Dave's not here. We'll just make sure one of us or both of us do it. Okay. Yep. Well, right now, Brenda's out this week on vacation yeah. and Pat's out because um, she's taking a few days because her daughter yep. had, a had a baby. So, yep. um, 
hopefully the bills will get entered before the end. Of right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So. Yeah, I know Brenda's back to, um, to uh, Monday. Monday. Yep. Right. Yeah. I, and again, I apologize for not catching the 5:30. It didn't oh, even register. Yeah, just, I'm sorry. I didn't. I should have reminded you today, I but I, I you were so good about writing back. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but I looked at the left. agenda. I, I went through all the agenda. I know you never really look at the I date didn't, and time, I, right? The date and time yeah. didn't register. Yeah. Obviously. Well, I was lucky. Somebody said something to me, so I, I was here anyway. I know, and I wish I, I should have said something. Okay, I think it was sorry, here guys. already, and somebody, I was like, oh, sorry. 5.30. Okay. Yeah, but that's really embarrassing. Yeah, it's not, they, were, um, they, were, they were fine. They were just going over the school thing. And I know, but I, I should have been here. So, listen. any other questions? We're good. Motion to adjourn? I make that motion. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan.